Gilby and Anthony Show. I have no clue what anybody's saying, but it's the funniest damn show. More stupidity on the way. 1027. 1027 WNW, it's the Opie and Anthony Show. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> Off to another fine start today, Anthony. Yes. What? <laughs> Right off the bat, what the hell? The mic flags are on here now. What is this? Is this the cheesiest? It's pieces of paper that say 1027 WNEW on uh, little square things. Let's rip it off so, and get them mad. Ah, uh, see, they're on to me. They, they tighten the screw really, really tight. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Na, 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 na. We said we don't want any mic flags. <laughs> there you go. There's yours. Be patient a couple of seconds. Our mics are back to normal. We keep telling people Ant and I can't see each other with these stupid huge mic flags on the microphones. We hate those mic flags. God, there are people around here that really need to get a real job. <laughs> this is their this is their job to put mic flags on the mic every day. <sighs> okay, go. I'm going to take this little uh, FM Talk 1027 one home, though. A little memento. <laughs> there we go. I'll leave it over here in the corner. All right, Ed. Much better. Hey, Hope, there you are. How hey, you what's doing? up, bud? How are you? <laughs> Good. I'm exhausted already. I know. We've had a great hour of radio so far. I think we've uh, done enough today. <laughs> hey, oh, give me the... Damn that thing. Oh, <laughs> look at you. I hate that. <laughs> Everyone steps on my effing headphone cord. You know something? I it might sound a little nitpicky. Can we get a jack where I sit? Where is your the headphones? The jack's like way over to my right. Everyone steps on it. Man, and you're changing. Jay Moore almost took my head off. You're starting to get an attitude and stuff. That's what it is, Hope. You're starting to demand things, you know. I'm <laughs> Just plug it in. <laughs> I got to hear this. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'm I'm exhausted hey, from playing uh, hey, Half Life. Hey, <laughs> what do you got in front of you? Oh, uh, a couple of uh, snapshots. Come on. What? These these could be the funniest two pictures I've ever seen in my life. And they are going on the website. No, 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 no. Are they on? They're on oh, they WNEW.com? Oh, they got to get on the underground, on the unofficial website. Steve, steal them from the uh, WNEW.com website. Well, if you go to uh, com, I guess what, our little section there? Yeah. Air staff, and then you click on Opie and Anthony. You could see pictures of Opie with his head, uh, his whole body pretty much sticking through the giant pumpkin cutout when he went pumpkin picking with Sandy for Halloween. <sighs> and there's another lovely shot of him with his little red wagon <laughs> pulling a couple of pumpkins. Shut up. <laughs> I still think it's. Ah, that's adorable. All right, let's see. I'm trying to find him. They got it up there. I just saw him on a. Uh... You might have to refresh your uh, web uh, page there, Opie. Let's see. I'm refreshing. You think it's on the Wall of Fame? Maybe. Let me see this. <laughs> we got our raw picture up there. Nope, it's not up there. No? You sure? Let me get, I saw it on Scott's. Let me look at the uh, Wall of Fame. Maybe it was the web page before. Valentine's here. Party. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Now that we mentioned that, it, it's hard to get on the uh, website. It's not there, thank God. Really? Thank I God. Can't, I can't uh, see why. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Well, it'll be on the um, on the unofficial website too. But oh my God, the picture! I don't know which one is uh, more adorable. <laughs> you sticking your head through the giant pumpkin cutout. Or uh, you pulling the little red wagon with the pumpkins. <laughs> you just, I got to say, though, thank you. I, I, I was hoping you were going to say it on your own without me having to point something out. Okay. That, that's very obvious in those pictures. Okay. Well, no, the one with you sticking through the pumpkin, I can't really see it as much. Okay. But uh, pulling the wagon, I got to admit, your face, you don't, you look like you really don't want to be there. No, why? I, I got I to gotta go with you on No, that. why? Because the Mets were in extra innings at that point. Yeah, and I lost the. I, we went over that whole story. I, I lost the uh, the you know the reception at that point. Yeah, so I had no choice to go pumpkin picking instead of watch uh, watching listening to the rest of the Met game. <laughs> pumpkin picking, boy, those are some big pumpkins. Oh, I can't wait till those are uh, up and running. 
on right. some side or another. Caesar, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? All right. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for like five or six months now, and uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, let you guys go for like three months because I'm off the boot camp. What? Boot camp? Yeah, I'm going to the Marines, Paris Island. Hey, congrats. Thanks. Uh, is there any way you guys can maybe set me up with a banging before I leave or son? <laughs> <laughs> when are you leaving? Uh, the 18th. Uh, yeah. Well, there's got to be some, you know, girls crazy to bang a mar- or son. I don't... I, well, dude, you got it. <sighs> uh, the reason we stopped... Well, you know, my, my, brother, my brother's also going with me. Maybe we can put on a rotisserie or something. Got to do it. You have to. We Those have one rules. rule on our radio show. It's such a distraction when we can hear the radio show in the background because we're on a 40-second delay. Yes. And we keep telling you guys, if we hear the radio on when you're live on the air, we gotta just, we just got to hang up on you. Unbelievable. Because all the email comes in, people get really frustrated at all the really bad phone calls we get on this radio show. And one of the reasons is because people want to hear themselves on the radio, so they're distracted. They're trying to listen to the show and talk to us at the same time. Yeah. Turn your radio down. Please. Everyone turn. knows that already. Uh, Ed, what's going on? Yeah, I was wondering, is it is it official now that, that you're a pussy whip fag, Obi? Or... Uh, I mean, it, it... you know, on the New York radio message board, that's the latest rumor. That you're a fag? <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the, rumor or fag? Rumor. The faithful listeners are pounding that thing. I feel sorry for Alan Sniff and the, uh, the, the rock and roll dentist. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, Obi, I'm a conductor for the Long Island Railroad. Are you? Yeah, and I'll... Uh... I'll reserve the fag car for you if you want. I mean, the fag car. Yeah, it sounds like you know all about the fag car. That's me. You know it. All right. Thanks, bud. You love it. There's the beer car and there's the mm-hmm. fag car that uh, Ed runs. Instant feedbacks coming in. A lot of them saying, uh, "When's the rock coming in?" The rock is coming in at five o'clock today. We're very, very excited. Mm-hmm. We hope he's going to be excited to be on our fine radio show, Anthony. What was he on the View this morning? He was on the View with the Bobwa. That's a that's a tough booking. <laughs> the Rock on the View. Rock on the View. Only a bunch of old ladies watch the View. Any guy that's we gotta on ask the him, View. We got to ask him about that right off the bat. How it felt because uh, what is he going to get accomplished there? A guy on the View. Yeah, the audience isn't quite uh, the wrestling uh, demographic. No, I wouldn't think it's a bunch of tea slurping old bags. Sit around watching The View. They're all as old as like Mae Young. Yeah. They watch The View. And any guy I've ever seen on there, it's like, why the hell would you go on The View? Our own uh, pal from Comedy Central. What's his name? Could be in tomorrow. Louis Black? Louis Black. Louis Black was on The View. What the hell is Louis Black doing on The View? It's their, it's their managers and stuff. It's their people. It's their handlers, eh? Ugh. Ah. They talk you into it. They say, hey, this would be good for you. We've had some uh, offers to do certain shows. We've certain uh, TV shows that we just deny. To be honest with you, I think we have denied everything. <laughs> every single TV offer that comes in because you know why? We'd look like idiots doing it. Right. We know that. We don't have to be on uh, TV. And then there's TV shows trying to split us up like, uh, we only want Oak. We only want Ant. Yeah. It's like, well, no. <sighs> Stupid, like, uh, Sort of um, one of those Bill Maher shows. Oh, we did turn down. Politically incorrect. We did turn down politi- politically incorrect because yeah. we hate Bill Maher. And the next time we see him, we're going to punch him in the face. Punch him in that huge forehead. But they wanted us to do like the uh, be like the announcer voice when he was uh, filming here in New York. Yeah. Right? We're not going to do it. We don't Sorry. like the guy. We think he sucks. Bill Maher. Then some Fox show. Wanted us to do something. Local Fox show that uh, runs at like 3.30 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I, what? You know, leave that to uh, I mean, we'll the Toby Toms and of the of the radio industry. We'll take ex- exposure any way we can get it, but... Now to make our own news. But we're still out drinking at 3.30. Yeah. If it was 5 a.m., then we would Can't talk. make it. Right. You didn't happen to see Tubby Tom's appearance on that MTV show? Um, they, they rate uh, oh the list on the v- list VH1 VH1 whatever the hell it is I don't I, boy I'm not knowing much of anything today <laughs> I'm like what is that who is that what who I'm shot Tom Like is with his uh, Down syndrome haircut oh my God you know he shouldn't go on TV he really shouldn't I don't get it that mongoloid hairdo the Down syndrome haircut. What's he doing? God, I just come on. Can't stand him and can't stand his radio show. Can't stomach yeah. it. 
try, you know, uh, gave it a, a try for like five minutes. No, I, I'll be honest. Oh. I gave it a couple weeks. Five Kate, minutes at a clip. Hated him when I knew he was coming here. Said, yeah. all right, I will put all that aside, even though we, like, battled in the beginning. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, I'll, I'll have an open mind. I think everyone should at least have an open mind. And then I, uh, I listened as much as I could. And it's just god-awful. It's Horrid. just god-awful. Horrid. Oh, man. Uh, oh. <laughs> what? It's line two, Steve. Will O and A do the Rosie O'Donnell show? Yeah. Steve. Yo, what's up? What's up? Why don't you guys go in Rosie? Yeah, Rosie. Come on. That's Rosie? another show. Like, what guy would go? What self-respecting man would go on that show? Some fake. Rosie. Every day you see the guys in the audience. Oh, my God. You know they're with I love you, wife. Rosie. Rosie, I love you. Rosie oh. would never have a son, first of all. Yeah. Well, what's up with adopting this third child? Like, give me a break. She's eating him. <laughs> she's snacking on him, and she's halfway through the second one, and she needs another. And, uh, I, I'll give me the baby. I <laughs> want that baby in my belly. I'll tell you what's up with that. Uh, Rosie wants to pretty much save the world. Yeah. And if it means, like, adopting 17 kids, she's going to do it. She's one of those. Save the world. But meanwhile, she thinks she's the type of person... Who uh, is just all uh, good. A perfect role model she's for perfect. everybody else. Right. So she's going to adopt these uh, children and take them away from a life of horror, I guess. Horror. Uh, she and, is and be horror. And be Rosie O'Donnell, perfect person that she thinks she is. She knows everything. She knows all the right things. And anybody that doesn't agree with her is wrong. She gets on that show of hers and starts preaching. Oh, my God. Oh, shut up. Christ. First of all, she gets on the bandwagon with that um that Chub Club thing, tries to preach about that. You can't even lose weight yourself. She hasn't lost a pound. <laughs> Before you start getting on your vehicle and preaching a cause, please try to do it yourself first. Before, you know? Before you branch out. If you slimmed down a bit and then started your Chub Club to get other people to slim down, hey, sure. It's kind of like not? it's kind of like an alcoholic telling everyone else not to drink. Don't drink. <laughs> Don't drink. What? While you're just, another beer. While you're just slamming them in the background. Yeah, exactly. You know. Hey, did you guys see uh, the band show last night? Yeah. Yes, I did. Was that game, Hungry Hungry Oprah's. <laughs> oh my God. I yeah. Just fell this it was game. the Hungry Hungry Hippo game, but right. it was Oprah. And, and, it, <laughs> and it had like these little miniature uh, hamburgers. Hamburgers. <laughs> oh my God. It was great. Listen, I gotta go, guys. Uh, music, bye. Yeah, the man show was pretty funny. It, was it like a retrospective of the past year? It was hilarious last night at Comedy Central. Yeah. And I was watching with my brother. Sandy was there and Sandy's sister. And, uh, and they did the whole lingerie segment. Did you yeah. see that? Oh yeah. man, all the all the chicks from the show. What are they called? The Jib juggies. The juggies or the jibblies or the jigglies. The juggies. The juggies. Yeah, and they they're, were. Uh, they're going into the dressing room and and trying all like the hottest lingerie and that one blonde that is just like. She was, cute. She was huge. Right. And Sandy is just getting more and more agitated. Really. More and more agitated. Every hot woman that is uh, appearing on the TV, and me and my brother are just losing it, loving life. And my brother had the line of the night last night. He goes, uh, "Sandy, I don't, I don't think this uh, this segment is catering toward you." Right. You know. Exactly. Because she's like, "Oh my God, her boobs are so blown up and big." And look was at she getting, that. Is she getting pissed? Oh yeah. Does she need another cruise? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be glad to send her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you know, it. I think I'm gonna have to write a check live on a radio show for you. Are you gonna do that? It's Are you serious? It's gonna kill me. It's gonna kill me, but I'm gonna do it. You're actually gonna pay for Sandy's cruise? Yeah, I, you gotta explain uh, without explaining, obviously. Yeah, uh, what we're talking about. Well, uh, uh, my wife Jen, um, is a little pissed off, I guess. And decided to uh, go on a cruise on my American Express card and uh, took Sandy. Right. Your girlfriend. Right. And with her. Right. And you just assume, like, Sandy paid her way. Yeah. And your wife paid her way. No, no, no. All charges went on my Amex. I paid for your girlfriend's <laughs> cruise. I bought a cruise for your girlfriend. Airfare down to Florida. The cruise. In the Caribbean or wherever they went. Well, she needed a shoulder to cry on. And, well, that's a pretty expensive shoulder. My God. I know it sucks because now I'm going to have to pay for that cruise. Uh, yeah. 
You know? <laughs> okay. I won't. Uh, I won't deny no, it. In all fairness, to Aunt, Aunt's like that, dude. Whatever. They they scheme behind your back that you don't really have to pay me, but I really have to pay you, and I know that. Yeah. What it's gonna come down to though, I'm gonna have to pay for that cruise. You have to pay for the other one, and neither one of us got a BJ. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got nothing. I got to uh, write off a. Uh, uh, I got to write a check to you for a great vacation down the Caribbean, and I got squat. That's all right. Out of it. That's all right. I'm getting effed. <laughs> <laughs> More ways than one. That's right. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but uh, the Rock is coming in at five o'clock today, Anthony. Yeah. Very excited. If the Rock is listening, uh, you got a bunch of huge fans here on this radio show. I hope he's the Rock. I hope he's the Rock and uh, not Dwayne. I hope he uh, throws us around the studio and and has a lot of fun up here today. Yeah, I want the Rock to come into the studio. I, I heard uh, on the View he wasn't the Rock really. He was the Rock a little bit, then he was Dwayne. He was Dwayne. We just want the Rock. I've seen him on the other shows sometimes, and he's like, you know, yeah, well, you know, if you smell what the rock is cooking. Right. And it's like, wait a minute. No, you, you're the rock. Right. Smoke. to be the rock. Do what it takes. Smoke some crack, whatever, drink. Just come in here as the rock. Absolutely. And you will make us very, very happy. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> happy. We're like little kids today. Yeah. For the first time, I'm going to look at one of our guests and go, oh, my God, it's a superstar. It, it, absolutely. <laughs> and you know how big that guy is? You know how tall he is? It's huge. It's gonna look like uh, make us look like all fidgets. That's all right. And then uh, my girlfriend will be uh, creaming her pants over another guy. Great. <laughs> yeah, she really loves. Oh my God, she's already in the city walking around just can't. She's all giddy. She's all dressed up. Yeah, that makes a guy feel good. She oh she got all dressed up for the rock. Yeah. Oh, that's that, something. There's such a double standard too. Cause, yeah. Because like I was just saying about uh, the man show last night, I'm sitting there. It's like. It's like girls I will never, ever meet on the tube and just great lingerie, yeah. huge boobs, perfect bodies. You like have to sit there and watch. They're crawling around the floor, and you're just losing it. Any any guy would, right? Uh-huh. And, and she gets pissed because she sees that I'm losing it a little bit. But it's a TV. But it's a TV. But she could just lose it over the rock to the point where I swear to God, if the rock said, give me a Hummer, she would do it. Oh, my God. Without a doubt. And she is a nice girl, but she would do it, right? And Rick would step in and say, hey, Rock, you get your hands off my sister, and the Rock would kill you. And that would, <laughs> club. And that would be great to see. <laughs> but, but, but see, she finds it completely normal that, you know, she, she could have all these whacked out fantasies with someone that she will see in the flesh. Yeah. Right? Someone in the flesh that maybe a phone number could get slipped to inadvertently. You never know, right? We can only hope. Oh, <laughs> Oh my God! We can only wish. We can only pray. Uh, and, and also at four o'clock today on the on the show, Jeffrey Ross, a very funny guy. Yeah. What the hell is going on here? We're starting to get like real celebrities and real guests. Uh, it's all downhill from here. I want to go back to you know on the way egg shooting and. Well, know, we will. We and we still are. And penis weightlifting. That yeah. type of thing. But uh, we have uh, you know things like lesbian for a day that we still do. Jeffrey Ross, the king of the the one liner. Mm -hmm. He does the roast on uh, Comedy Central all the time, and he's he's like the hit by far. And he's appearing at Caroline's tonight. Is that the deal? All right, so we have lots to do, Ant. Yes, we do. And a lot of people um, requesting more. They call my name. Uh, they call my name's Bill. Oh boy, bits. Oh Bill, we need lesbians for Lewis Black tomorrow. Why a Bill's Coffee Shop? We had like ten girls call yesterday to be a lesbian for a day. Oh, most of them can't make it. Uh-oh. And if you're a girl and you want to be a lesbian for a day, we're setting that up tomorrow because Louis Black's coming in. And every time Louis Black comes in, he says, uh, you know, nothing's going on when I'm here. He hears the show. When I'm here. He hears the show and he can't make it in. And there's debauchery going on, all kinds of fun and hijinks, nudity, lesbians. And uh, he gets a little upset when he comes in and we don't have that for him. Right. So we got to hook him up. Definitely. So if you're a lady who wants to come in and be a lesbian for a day, please give us a call. Eric, what's going on? Let me tell you something, guys. I don't have a big enough sponge to wipe up my girlfriend's mouth when The Rock comes on the damn TV. It is the most annoying thing in the world. Tell the guy to put a shirt on or something when he's out there. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I, we went to a WWF show with my friend Rob, and we're all sitting there. This guy comes out, and I swear, within five minutes, she's like hanging on a ring post, yeah. and, and I lose her for the night. Oh, I know, I know. 
Uh, what, what are you going to do? What can you do with this guy? You, you got to put on a shirt, uh, some overalls, you know. I, I take I take satisfaction in knowing that he's married and he's probably not getting all that. <laughs> <laughs> when he's traveling the country. Oh, I, I sort of, you know. It, so he's cursed as well. Trust me, every guy out there is cursed. It doesn't right. matter who yeah. you are. It doesn't matter if you're a big time rock star or a movie star. We're all cursed. I used to. We I used all to have love, our own curse out there. I used to love wrestling. <laughs> I watched it all the time. I finally got my girlfriend to turn off Ally McBeal for once and start watching Raw with me. The minute she saw The Rock, I can't get her away from the TV. I know. I know. It ruins wrestling for me. Well, uh, definitely call in with your questions for The Rock because we're going to do a whole segment where he talks to you guys. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I got plenty to say to him. All right, Eric. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's pissed at The Rock. And I don't blame them, man. A lot of guys. All right, Ant, uh, we're running late. We're going to take a quick break. And right after the commercials, I think we're going to play the They Call My Name's Bill phone booth bit. Oh, boy. A lot of people requesting the They Call My Name's Bill bits today. We found a girl that could shoot stuff from a private area. More stupidity on the way. 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Thanks for checking us out today. We appreciate it. Um, and we have audio from Alan Sniffin, too. Oh, yeah. He was talking about us on the New York Radio Message Board. Yeah, he does like a real audio uh, radio show kind of thing. I guess in between cleanings, fillings, and x-rays. Right. He has time to uh, do a little real audio recording of uh, his opinions of New York Radio. Well, our faithful listeners attacked the uh, New York Radio message board last night. Yeah. They, they, they continue to attack it as we speak, and we <laughs> kind of told you guys to lay off because <laughs> it was funny, but... Yeah, we kind of like the guy, actually, because yeah, he, he, he does, does have an open sort. mind as far as what we're doing here at NEW. One of the, one of the few that posts on the New York Radio message board. How could you not like your friendly neighborhood dentist? Right. You know? Seems like a nice enough guy. Yeah, he's all right. The only thing is, hmm. uh, if you listen to his, uh, what he calls board reflections. Right. It's his own private little radio show on the computer, Opie. Yes. He sounds like friggin' Tom Likas. Are you serious? His voice sounds like Tom Likas. Do you want to get into it now? I guess we, we could a little bit. I got a, I got it somewhere here. Keep talking, and I gotta find it. Yeah, me and uh, Rick were listening to it a little bit, and he goes off on a whole thing about us and morning radio, and well, uh, he insists we're doing morning. I hope you were listening yesterday because it was really, really, really funny. Um, yeah. We were talking about the New York Radio Message Board. There's a bunch of tools that uh, need lives that discuss all the important issues that are. Uh, uh, that that concern New York radio, or they think are important issues. And, and and what are some of the examples they've discussed in the past? Oh my God! Should uh, do, they come up with these stations I never heard of? Should WXAZ do standards? Right. And then there's a whole like twenty answers to the question. What should WNEW do next? And then there's the, like tw twenty more people with the. Uh, different opinions and they're all old school i mean they're convinced yeah. like uh, you know all the jocks that used to work here yeah still uh have have something to offer to other radio stations in new york oh and you here bring back dave it's and, like and pat st john and carol and have them go back to doing classic rock it's yeah. like what? what it's like when are, when is the rest of new york radio going to wake up and and realize what a talent carol miller is oh, oh. Yeah, but that's what you get on that. Like I said, a lot of these guys, I picture them, they have their uh, black and white photo of them by the big uh, radio microphone mm -hmm. wearing the suit and tie and holding the uh, one uh, headphone ear very close to their ear as their little promo shot. And and what we're doing here at NEW just repulses them. They yeah. hate it. And they're convinced because they hate it, everyone else should hate it. Right. So they go on the board and spiel about why we suck and how we suck as the uh, the ratings, uh, God willing, uh, continue to rise. They they had a whole discussion how un unprofessional we are because like we'll cough and and whatever burp and just you know do stupid stuff while the mics are on. Yeah, maybe our grammar isn't perfect every time we open our yaps. As Oops. As long as we're entertaining and uh, making people laugh, that's all we care about. But they couldn't imagine. 
opening up a mic and broadcasting the way we do. Right. I mean, that is just heinous. Tom, what's up? Hey, what are you guys, a bunch of pussies? Why? What? You tell everybody to bash this dentist yesterday, and now you're kissing butt on him. No, no, I think you've misunderstood us. We said bash the board, but we did. We actually said that Alan's a pretty cool guy, and he's had an open mind. I, the, the point we were trying to make yesterday is... Uh, there's a lot of rumors that have started on the New York radio message board that have no substance whatsoever. The latest. Oh, come on, he put his drill in your mouth. The latest. Uh, <laughs> shut up, dude. Fags. Thanks, Tom. Uh, and the latest, the latest being that, um, you know, Ant and I are going to mornings. There's just yeah. no truth to that whatsoever. And he just insists we're going to mornings. And what happened was the listeners went on the New York radio message board yesterday and started their own rumors, and that's where the comedy came in. Yeah, it was you guys funny. were making us laugh really hard. Yeah. So uh, Alan has responded to all the mess we created yesterday and today, Anthony. Yes. I, I believe this might be the first time uh, Alan's uh, actually doing a show over a major network. Yeah. He does these like once a week, these board reflections. I think if and he gives uh, his, his opinions uh, on things. We give him a form on this show. You think he'll invite us in to do a, a root canal <laughs> one day? And let's not forget, this guy is a dentist. Yes. The other WNEW issue, which has come up in the last few days, is Opie and Anthony. You know, you know what the problem is when you discuss people like Opie and Anthony and Howard Stern and so forth, is their fans can't seem to discuss this on the level that it ought to be discussed at. Nobody, including myself, is making any personal attacks against Opie and Anthony. And I'm the one running the board. I did not say anything negative about them. If In fact, up, I think like I've been a supporter of Opie and Anthony, and I think they have acknowledged such over the air that my personal position with respect to them has been a reasonable one. What I did say recently, and I will stand by, is that I thought that they should be doing morning drive on WNEW. And I believe they should be. I'm not saying that as a personal criticism of them or their listeners. That's not a knock, and I don't understand why it's being taken that way. From a radio programming point of view, a radio programmer is like somebody who has a, 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 a hand of cards, and you want to manipulate those cards as if it were a game of poker. You want to use them in such a way that your hand is the strongest. You don't have a personal love for the jack of hearts versus the jack of spades. Your interest is taking those cards, putting them together in such a way that you'll win. That's what this is all about with radio programming. I'm not knocking Opie and Anthony. I'm only pointing out that it is obviously at the moment WNEW's most successful show. The most important day part in radio is morning drive. Therefore, it seems to me that the most successful show should be in the most important day part. And that is my whole argument. I understand that they apparently don't want to do morning drive. I understand that they would like to have a syndicated deal. I understand all those things. But if I were the program director of WNEW, I would put them on in morning drive because that would be the best thing for my radio station. I'm not attacking Opie and Anthony. If anything, I'm giving them a compliment. I'm saying they are so good, they ought to be in ultra prime time as opposed to just prime time, which is what I would consider PM prime. And further, if they were on in the mornings, WNEW could bring in somebody else in afternoon drive and try and develop another personality or personalities for the radio station, which they desperately need to do. If they bring in somebody else new in the morning, they're going to have a very difficult time because it is so competitive. Break in a new voice in a high-profile slot in the afternoons, and they will have a better chance of succeeding. And if all of that works, if all of that works, WNEW is much better off. Now, I understand the Howard Stern argument. Why would Infinity want to put Opie and Anthony up against Howard Stern? Because Howard might get damaged, and why would Infinity want to do that? Okay, that's a legitimate argument. I understand that. It would be a gamble. There's no question putting Opie and Anthony on in the morning. But in my opinion, for whatever that's worth, and it's just my opinion, Howard Stern would do just fine. A lot of people have competed against Howard Stern. John Del Bel John DeBello in Philadelphia, Mancow in Chicago, etc., etc. And Stern always does well. 
could he lose a little bit of audience from a direct competitor? Yeah, he could. But the guy's getting around an 8 to a 9 share in New York right now. Let's say he drops a share, maybe even a share and a half. He's still going to be the number one show. And if WNEW can go from a point four or point five, whatever their horrible morning ratings are right now, if he can go from that to a 2 five, if they can do that then they will be much better off, even if Stern loses a little bit. Because I don't think Opie and Anthony yeah. are going to draw just from Stern. No, They're going to draw from other radio stations. So it seems to me there's a good possibility that they could do well in the morning, and Stern would still do well in the morning. And under those circumstances, Infinity comes out way ahead. They still got Stern, and now they've got a successful franchise at 102.7. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> now, you can disagree with me, but I think there is a logic to it. Uh, now, right. After all of the discussion and those arguments that I have made on the board, apparently Opie and Anthony decided uh, <laughs> yesterday that they were going to encourage their, pl their fans to come on the New York radio message board and just post crap, which is what went on yesterday afternoon. <laughs> and you know what? I don't know what was gained by that exactly. <laughs> Obviously, I can block them. I can delete the posts. I can do all of that stuff. <laughs> but I'm not sure what was being gained here. Those who want to defend or argue for Opie and Anthony, I encourage you to come on the board. Believe me, I don't want to be the only one expressing my opinion here. That's boring. That's no fun. But come on and debate the issue. What is it that I or somebody else has said on the board that you disagree with? Don't come on there and say, oh, you're all a bunch of DJ wannabes, or you're jealous, <laughs> or whatever. That's the same crap that Stern's fans spew out when somebody criticizes Howard. And that has that's, that's a bunch of nonsense. Argue <laughs> the point. If you disagree with something I or somebody else have said, then take what it is they say and argue with it. That's what debate is all about. That's what makes it interesting. Personal attacks under false names that say nothing only drag the entire forum down and force me to delete the posts. I am not out to get Opie and Anthony. I think they will tell you that. Never mind what I say. Ask them, because they read the board, and they know what I've been saying for the past year and a half about their show. <laughs> if you've got a criticism or a disagreement, then argue it on that level. If you're going to come on and just trash the board, I'm going to delete your post, and I'm going to block it. Hey, the drill survived. goes on. <laughs> oh. That sound effect is killing people. I know it is. Some people really have a problem what? with that drill. My man. favorite is the spit. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, just making people talk all over the damn city, Anthony. S uh, Sandy from Manhattan. Okay, enough with the dentist bit. I'm getting a cavity just listening. <laughs> this makes me sick. Alan Sniff and the uh, the dentist. Where the hell is that train? We got the train. The train yeah. train hit Alan. Poor Alan. Shut this guy up. Stop, stop, stop. Wow. But that's what goes on on a, a regular basis on the New York Radio Message Board. Yeah. That's All these it. armchair quarterbacks. Figuring it out from uh, the other side of the mic. Right. They, they uh, don't have a show to do here in New York, so they uh, critique... The other ones. Correct. Wonderful. All right. What are you trying to queue up? The last part is really funny. The, the last part of Alan's thing? All right. Really? Like the last you part sure? Of, oh. And he talks about himself and everything. Oh, great. About being a dentist? Right. Okay. When I was in dental school, he well, took that. he's talking about, like, how he's going to be back on radio and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We should give him a show here at NEW. They should. Couldn't do any uh, worse than half the shows around here. We already do. It's called Tom Lyons. Hello, oh, I'm Alan. Yeah, I'm having a problem with my molar. I got like this uh, impacted uh, molar. Ow! Ow! Wow, that's a fucking hurt. I want to know what to do. Well, hit it with a you lock. <laughs> right from there? Yeah, from right there. All right. Polarizing radio station. Whether you love WNEW or hate it right now, and we've got people who feel both ways on the New York radio message board. Yes. The fact is, 
that it is a polarizing radio station. Is it talk you can't ignore? Is that true? It's true at least some of the time in terms of radio people. Whether or not that's going to translate into overall ratings and so forth for the station, we'll see. <laughs> I've argued before, and I will again. I think this radio station is going to succeed. I think it's going to appeal to the right demographics, and it's going to do well. It's never going to be number one, I don't think, but I think it is going to get good ratings with men 18 to 30, 18 to 35, mm -hmm. something like that. That's a desirable demographic for advertisers. That means they will be able to sell the station and make money. And folks, that's what this is all about. And I think WNEW can succeed in doing it. I don't think they're there yet, but I think they're on their way. So I am not a hater of the radio station. So when you attack me personally on the board, you're attacking the wrong guy. All right. With that... <laughs> this is Alan Smith, and thank you for your time this time. Until next time. Hey, who used to say that? Thanking you for your time this time till next time. Roger Grimsby, I think. It, yeah, I think you might be right. Was it Roger Grimsby? Hey, hey, Alan, you're ripping off Roger Grimsby, <laughs> the late Roger Grimsby, Mr. Liverspot himself. <laughs> All right, there goes our, our pal, the rock and roll dentist, Alan Sniffin. <laughs> All right, you got to love him. Enough on that topic. We'll move on to other things in just a bit. Mario, I just canceled my dentist appointment. <laughs> Sound effects are killing me. Uh. Stop. I'm going to the dentist tomorrow. People are freaking out. <laughs> they can't handle the sound effect. People hate the dentist, man. Well, of course. Uh, Andrew. Yo, turn that crap off. It's killing me, guys. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh. All right, and let's take a quick break. We'll be back, all right? All right. Opie and Anthony. Yeah, can we get these illiterates off the air, please? We suck. If I wasn't on it, I wouldn't listen. <laughs> 1027 WNEW. All right, this is 1027 WNEW. Mixing up the crap today, huh, Ant? Oh, yeah. Throwing it all over the place. Hell yeah. It's the ONA show. If you got something, 212-757-1027. Our fax line, 212-957-9639. Why are you chuckling over there, Anthony? Well, uh, I just went to the um, WNEW.com website, and indeed your pictures are on the uh, website. You looking through the giant pumpkin, and you pulling the little red wagon through the giant pumpkin field. Now, where are these pictures? Go to... Uh, our little section where it says Opie and Anthony, you click on that. All right. And then right under our baby pictures, it says new embarrassing photos number two, Opie the Pumpkin King. Oh. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I had to refresh. <laughs> Sometimes you got to refresh your web page, Anthony. Oh, of course. It'll reload. Act oh, God damn. There it is, the famous picture. Look at all the other guys with their girls. Uh, the second picture, you can see it on my face. Why am got, I here? Please, gotta admit. Please admit that part of it. Yeah, you look like you really uh, don't want to be there. All right. Gotta admit. I'm sure they'll be on the unofficial website uh, by tonight, Anthony. Yeah. Speaking of the unofficial Opie and Anthony website, mm -hmm. there is a very, very funny little uh, <laughs> video clip, I guess. Almost a video clip. It's like a, an animation. Animation, sure. Of uh, Spaz and Ricky Martin on a jet ski. It is so damn funny, man. you got to see this thing. The guy's got the big Spaz head, and Ricky Martin's on the back of the uh, on the back of the jet ski, and they almost look like he's humping them as the jet ski drives over the waves. Yeah, and uh, Ricky Martin's holding on to Spaz. It's very, very yeah. creative and very funny. I think that's the same guy that's uh, done a bunch of other animations for the radio show. Yeah. Spaz doing the tomato and uh, a couple others. I gotta see this thing again. I'm popping it up right now. Spaz and Ricky Martin. Foundrymusic.com. Yeah, a guy calls himself the Red Pencil, I guess. The That's Red the Pencil. <laughs> Let me see. Turn it around. It's too funny, man. <laughs> Spaz's face going like a mile a minute. Uh, you're gonna laugh. Ricky when... Martin on the back. You're gonna laugh when you see that one. <laughs> www. Foundrymusic.com, Anthony. Very good. All right. Uh, we were wasting so much time that we got to take another break. But before we do, we're going to play the They Call My Name's Bill. 
Oh, boy. Lost in a phone booth trying to find his way home, Anthony, okay? Yes. And don't forget, 4 o'clock, Jeffrey Ross comes in. He's playing Caroline tonight. Very funny man. King of the one-liners. And at uh, 5 o'clock, we're all patiently waiting for his greatness to walk through our studio door. The Rock. The, the great WWE. one. Yes. Going two-on-one. <laughs> with That's a handicap Anthony. match. Yeah, we got a today. handicap match with The Rock. At 5 o'clock. Yes. All right, let's uh, play this, and we'll be back. I'll find association. I help you. You know, I had this number in my wallet. I, I don't know where I am. You don't know where you are? I had this number in my wallet. You're lost? I don't know. I'm at a phone booth. Give me the phone number. It's not on here. It's... There's no phone number on the phone? Let me look. What phone? You're calling from a phone. Is there a phone number there? Yes, there is. Could I have the phone number? I believe it's an eight. Hold on the phone. Can you hold on? Don't hang up. Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Who's this? This is Estelle. Can you uh, hear me? Hello? Don't hang the phone up. Hang up? No, do not hang up. Hold on, please. Don't hang up. I'm going to put you on the phone with someone else. Hold on. Hang up what? No. It's cold. You're cold? I'm colder, yes. I know. Cold like Brazil. I believe I need a change. Stay on the phone. I'm, I'm wet. You're all wet? Yeah, I'm wet. Okay. Would you just stay on the phone? I need a change. And my nurse isn't here. And, and do you need I'm going to walk across. The, you are? Can I'm, you tell me the I'm going to walk across the street now. Don't stay on Don't the phone. Who's this now? My name is Judy. What's yours? I call my name's Bill. Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi. Hi, Sam. You sound a little lost. Going to walk across the street now. You know what? I'd rather you didn't uh, walk across the street because if you walk across I the think. street, I can't talk to you. Oh, hey. Hey, Bill. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Are you still there? Who is this, please? This is Judy. Is this Bill? Where's Sam? Sam just went out to get some coffee. I hate coffee. Oh, Sam he... knows I hate coffee. Well, maybe he went to get your coffee and he said he was going out to get a drink. There's cars now, a lot of cars. I'm going gonna, gonna to cross the street now. You know what? If there are a lot of cars, you shouldn't be crossing the street. Right, here I go. I, I know, can't talk to I you. I think my home is across the street. Here I go. Are you talking on the phone, Bill? Hello? Hello? Oh, we should have called the police while we had him. Wasn't doing any good. He's still here. He called the police. He did not hang up. He put the phone down. He dropped the phone. He did not hang up. Oh, my God. Somebody called I told you. Ah, this is horrible. My God, he looks awful. Who is this? Who am I speaking to, please? Somebody call the ambulance. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Right, we're calling an ambulance. Can you give me the address? He's a mess. Don't touch him. Someone call an ambulance. Don't touch him. Leave him down there. Hello, can you give me, tell me where you are? It's too late. It's too late. This, this, bad. Spirit all over the road. Can you tell me where you are? It's too late unless you got a shovel. All right, we'll get a shovel. Where are you? It's too late. It isn't too late. It's are too you? late. What do you mean it's not too late? It's, it's over there and it's on you. <laughs> can't help you if you won't tell us where you are. You can't help anymore. Just bring a shovel. Can you tell me where you are right now? Disneyland! In Disneyland? Can you tell me where in Disneyland? Pirates of the Caribbean! And the Pirates of the Caribbean! Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me! I'm okay now! You're okay? You got all pulled yourself together again? A, a car hit me and I feel fine now! Oh, I'm so glad you That's feel fine. I, well, I, you had me really worried. That's all Bill needed was a little bumper. Can you tell me where you are, Bill? Jupiter! Now on Jupiter? Planet Jupiter. Is there a street number or a name on Planet Jupiter? 23 Jupiter. 23 Jupiter. 23. Okay. Do you live there? Send a cab. Send a, I would happily send a cab. But you send a cab. Send it. They're telling to make a right at Venus. Right at Venus. And it's Jupiter. 28 Jupiter. 28? That's what I said. Okay. And what are you doing there now? Masturbating. Oh, I see. Opie and Anthony. Is this the best radio you guys can come up with? 1027 WNEW. It's Opie and Anthony. This is 1027 WNEW. On the way, we have to play it one last time. Uh, drown, Cuban, drown. Uh, the little, little kid going back. Ilian Gonzalez. 
See all the protesting going on in Miami? Yeah. CNN had a, uh, a, some live footage going on. They're all protesting over the little boy. Poor kid. Got to go back to Cuba. Right. Cuba. And start rolling some uh, cigars. Some cigars instead of uh, going to school here in the States. Could be his last day in class. They show the little picture on the Daily News. Being walked to uh, school. It's just not fair. You give him a taste of freedom like that, and now you, you throw him back into that into yeah. that world over that there in Cuba. Hole. And he was here during Christmas. He got a bunch of cool presents and everything. A bunch. He got like thousands of gifts. Yeah. Everyone from all over the country were sending uh, sending this kid a gift. Next Christmas will be in Cuba, and it'll be like, hey, what I get? Oh, cigar and a bottle of rum. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. What happened? Where's my big wheel? Man, he's going to grow up to be a bitter man, huh? He'll be back on a inner tube. <laughs> I think once he gets a little older. Probably pitching for the, the Yankees in another 10 years, right? Yeah, he ought to start uh, warming up. All right, so we'll play uh, Drown Cuban Drown, getting a lot of requests for that. Also, uh, for the faithful listeners that uh, hung through the, the commercials, Anthony, yeah. let's give away some wrestling tickets. We do have The Rock coming in at uh, 5 o'clock. And right now, if you're the 10th caller at 212-757-1027, you're going to win a pair of tickets to see the WWF at the Continental Arena January 16th. Tickets, by the way, for this event still available through Ticketmaster, but the 10th caller gets a freebie pair. All right? I Quick musical break right into Drown Cuban Drown. If you haven't heard that, stick around. It's coming very, very soon. Drown, drown, Cuban drown, drown, Cuban drown, yeah, Cuban drown, 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 drown. coming in here. I'm just getting a little nervous because he was on MSNBC and he was just being Dwayne. People say he's just Dwayne. You know, he's being Dwayne. Not The Rock. We want The Rock. We want The Rock. We want The Rock. Like, what? what, what is it? He, he's got two distinct personalities. Dwayne and The Rock. Well, a lot of these uh, guys look at it as a, a role they play, but in the eyes of, like, you and I and a lot of the WWF fans, oh, no, he's The Rock. He's The Rock. He takes a dump as The Rock. He eats like I mean, The Rock. Yeah. He apps like The Rock. That'd be The Rock. He's like a superhero, Anthony. Like when you went to see, uh, you know, you heard Batman was going to be appearing at the mall. It wasn't the guy that played Batman. You know, it was Batman. Yeah, you, you were fully expecting, you know, the, the whole deal. Yeah. So we're praying. Because if he's just like Dwayne, then he's going to be like pulling teeth, and you guys are going to hear like really bad interviewing. It's like, well, so, uh. In my book, uh. So, like, uh, um, so did you, like, um, get into wrestling, like, a long time ago and stuff? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, my father and grandfather were in it. Three generations of wrestling. Uh. All right. We're going to take a lot of phone calls when he's in here. Yeah. If you hear him not being the rock, 
you guys know what to do, okay? Yes, our faithful listeners will know what to do. We are far too big a pussies to uh, I, I was just gonna confront say that. a we guy really the size of the rock. We re let's see, we're brave. We'll admit it. Yeah. We sound brave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we trash a lot of people and stuff. But if they're right in yeah. front of our face, we are... <laughs> Poof. Poof. That's where we need your help. Especially the rock. Right. That's huge. Yeah, he's as big as these ceilings. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm the rock. If you smell what the rock is cooking, uh... Well, we're a little nervous because we really like Mankind, too, from the WWF. Yeah. And we had him on the air to promote his book. And uh, we actually had a chance to have him in studio a second time. And the first interview on the phone was so bad and so painful because yeah. he decided not to be Mankind. He was Mick Foley. And we even tried to get him into the man Mankind character and stuff. Yeah. He couldn't be bothered. So we yeah. had a pass on, like, actually getting to meet him and having him in studio. Chris Jericho, he was uh, in character, on the phone, brilliant. Probably one of the best interviews we've had with a wrestler. The guy was hysterical. We were ragging him, he was ragging us. Right. Very funny, in character. See, these guys got to understand, to to us, they're they're like bigger than life. They're superheroes. We don't cartoon we don't, characters. Too. We don't want to see, you know, the face behind the, the yeah. curtain there. Can't be Dwayne. He's got to be the Rock. He's got to be the Rock. Uh, Donald, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? Real good. Every show I've seen him on, or even heard him on on the radio, he's always been Dwayne. I know. He's truly lame. Oh, no. Dead ass lame. Oh. Sorry, I shouldn't have cursed. That's not a curse. You can say ass, 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 ass. Cool. Yeah, you just can't say the big ones. Also, my mother goes crazy over this guy. Really? 40 old black woman drooling over this guy. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? Well, uh, pretty much every woman uh, here at WNEW wants to do The Rock. Please. They all can't wait. They can do the pebble. That's me. They're all in the bathrooms right now. <laughs> They're getting all ready, getting the yeah. makeup on, and fluffing hey. up the hair, and lo lubing up, taking their dumps and stuff, <laughs> getting ready. All right, Donald. Thanks a lot, man. Bye. Bye. Uh, Jamie, what's going on? Hey, The Rock was just at MSNBC. I work there. Yeah. He's the nicest, sweetest guy. Oh, cool. You guys should definitely not mess with him. He's so sweet. No, no, we no, don't no, want no. the nice, sweet rock. Oh, come on. He is like this. We want the pompous rock. You right. have never seen so many people go so crazy at our studios. It was insane. Well, I, I want like I want him to put fear in my eyes. I want him to like <laughs> make me believe that he is going to take the people's elbow to my forehead. I don't know bottom, kick your arms into position and the people's elbow. I don't think that's possible. He is like the nicest guy. I can't even believe that he could be mean. Uh, He's so sweet. No, we don't want him. To, we just want him to be kind of in character. That's all. Yeah. I know. We'll have fun with him, you know, either way. We understand, but we're just praying that he's the rock. Yeah. Well, maybe Where he comes in and calls us jabronis and stuff. Yeah, well, call me a jabroni. And then, I'll do that. I mean, a lot of people ask for their autograph, his autograph and, and asked if he would, like, you know, write that kind of stuff, and he did. He was really cool about it. All right, Jamie, thank you. All right, bye. I'm hoping he comes in here and goes, uh, which is which? And I go, well, uh, Rock, my name It doesn't matter <laughs> which is which. <laughs> Yeah, we need the rock. I want him to walk in that door with the sunglasses, Anthony, tilt his head up toward the ceiling. The people's eyebrow. Give a little sniff. Know that we have millions and millions of listeners. I want him to say, finally, the rock has come back to the Opie and Anthony show, even though this is his first appearance. Right. But who cares? If you smell what the rock is cooking. The rock says... Scott, what's going on? What's up, man? All right. Know your damn role. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> Is he going to come out like a fish or what? Um, I don't know. It's so weird. It's like having a schizophrenic on the air. You don't know what personality you're going to get. We have to do an interview, and we don't know what personality we're getting. I'm it's like two totally different people are coming in. If, if he's the way and I'm calling back. Yeah, we want you guys to call back and try to encourage him to be the rock. Because no, we're, we're going to have a tough time doing ways. it. All right. All right, you guys are fags. Um, no, we're not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys are fags. He has been the rock on shows. Yeah. What? Uh, Joe, what's going on? Hey, what's up? All right. First of all, you better hope that he ain't good friends with China. Why? Because uh, he'll want to kick your ass. 
I never said anything bad there. about China. But besides that, I've seen her act as The Rock on Channel 9 during yeah. a news interview on TV. Right. Oh, I saw that, too. He was kind of like... He was uh, saying his eyebrows were more famous than Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he was rock light. <laughs> All right, man. Rock light. Well, he was. He was like kind of the rock, but a little yeah. more conservative. We want him yeah. to just like come in here and be just belligerent. I met the rock and he was in character. This is encouraging. <laughs> Sean, turn down your radio. All right, what do you got, Sean? Sean. He's listening to the radio. Huh. Sean. Uh, is that your name? Did Spaz type it wrong? Steve. Steve. <laughs> Scott. Bill. Stan. Bob. Ryan. Ed. Sean. Matt. What an ass. <laughs> I, wish, I hope you guys could appreciate what happens on this radio show time, uh, at times, okay? Yeah. A lot of you guys have car phones, okay? Mm -hmm. Just picture how stupid some of our listeners are. Yeah. God, we love you guys, but you're a stupid some of you. <laughs> Just picture this. You're in your car. Uh -huh. You decide, I am going to call the Opie and Anthony show. I met the rock, and I have something to tell the boys. Right. Beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. Right? You dial up the O and A show. Mm -hmm. Spaz put you through. Hold on. Turn down your radio. They are going to be with you shortly. Mm -hmm. So now you have the phone to your ear. Yeah. We pick up. So now you could hear us saying, hello, Sean, what do you have for the show? But he's listening to the radio. Which is 40 seconds behind because we're in delay. Yeah. So he is ignoring the voice that is live nationwide in his ear and waiting for us to say hi through the radio. Through the radio. Brilliant. Oh, boy. And it happens all the time. Unreal. I'll call the right one. What happened to Jeffrey Ross? He was supposed to be here already. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jose. Yeah. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Lenny, how you doing? Greg. Hey, I met this guy one time down in Sea Caucus. The Rock, he's the most arrogant bastard I've ever met. That's what we want to say. It's the truth, I swear. He is so arrogant. That's I, I walked up to him to get say. an autograph for my two-year-old son. Right. The dude just blew me off. Uh, I was like, dude, you stink. That's what we want to say. He's the worst. The what? nicest guy in the Federation there, believe it or not, is Triple H. <laughs> that guy's great. All right. He blew us off. With the rock, he blows monkey. All right, thanks. All right, Chief. We want the arrogant rock. Yes. We want to be dissed. We want to be Absolutely. yelled at. Jabroni. We're willing to play. I hope he is. I guess we'll see. I, I, I want him to say something about the microphone. Oh, turn it up. Uh, shine it up real nice. The microphones we have in front of us. <laughs> Just saying, I want him to say something about the microphone. He's going to say his lines, but they'll be all like, you know, turn it sideways and, and stick it in your candy ass. Right. Hey, Mike, you're next. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, O&A? This is the guy in the Army again. Yeah, all right. I got a question. Why are these people that are on hold so stupid? They don't realize the radio's on through the phone as well when they're on hold. Well, I don't I don't understand it. Well, because it's two different things. You got the delay working on your radio, and and then the, uh, on the phone, it's uh, exactly what's happening uh, live in the studio. As soon as, as, as says, what's your name? Hold on. You hear you guys on the phone anyway, so why bother listening to the radio? And if you are on hold for the radio show, that is us live before delay. You get exactly. To hear, you, so you get to hear all the uncensored crap. You get to hear all the curses and everything else. So. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't understand why people continue to wait for us to say hi through the radio when they got the phone to their ear. It, it, it hey, you jackasses when you're on hold. It boggles the mind, Mike. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. You too. Bye. Everyone is just very excited hey, around People here. saying we should uh, hold the rock down and shave off his eyebrows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, how are we going to hold the rock down? Yeah. Uh, Tom, you're next. What's going on? Yeah, I want to know if you're going to do Fight Club with the rock so he can put his crotch on your face. Uh, no, that will not be happening. I'm no? going gonna to encourage the rock to beat the crap out of Rick today, though. Oh, good. Even better. I am encouraging that. The mode faggot. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't forget anything, do you? All right, Tom, thank you. All right, that's it. Bye. You guys suck. All right. Uh, Bob, you're next. Hey, I got a short part with you guys to get the Rocky character. All right. When he comes in, that's what we're doing. We thought that's him. It doesn't matter how you're doing. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. That's a uh, guaranteed short part way to do it. All right, man. You think, or he'll just go like, ha, 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 that's funny. That's funny. By all the right. way, my new book is available. Thank you, bro. Thanks a lot. Bye. And, you know, as we sit yeah. here and patiently wait for The Rock, 
Jeffrey Ross also uh, make an appearance today? Yeah. A return uh, appearance. <clears throat> I have to say, I think Bill Parcells is the most brilliant mind oh in my football God. today. Genius, this guy. He's an absolute genius. He's calculating like Michael Corleone, this guy. He's I, amazing. At this point in time, I truly believe he had, he was never going to quit coaching. Nope. Have it you been is. following this story? It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So he he, he knew everything that was going to happen. Bill Belichick, the assistant. Yeah. He's pretty much the number one candidate for all the you know head coaching jobs in the NFL as we speak. Yes. Uh, mostly the Patriots want him. Okay. Now, if he was a head coach, because he's under contract, no other team in the NFL could talk to Bill Belichick and hire him away. Absolutely. But there's a rule in the NFL: if you are an assistant coach, you are allowed to talk to other teams to be a head coach. Right. So Bill Parcells, knowing that he's probably going to lose his right-hand man anyway after the season, because there there was uh, some grumblings in the background and stuff. Bill mm -hmm. Belichick wasn't completely happy, is what I'm starting to hear. Right. Bill Parcells quits as, as the head coach of the Jets, <laughs> making Bill Be uh, Belichick the head coach now. Right. Which in turn means no one in the NFL could talk to Bill Belichick. Right. Knowing that Bill Belichick would not go for this. He will and leave. And would quit because he was so unhappy in the Jets organization. Thus okay? opening up the position. Thus opening up the position again. And now if the Patriots want to hire Bill Belichick, they're going to have to give the Jets draft choices. Draft choices. A little revenge for when Parcells uh, came to New York. I bow to him today. It's amazing. There's no doubt in my mind he makes an announcement uh, within, uh, what, uh, I guess we're waiting for the new owners to take new over. New owners who will... Probably hand over huge amounts of cash to Parcells right. to uh, once again take the helm of the Jets. He had no intention of leaving. Of leaving. <laughs> I am what he was doing. It's one man's opinion, but I am completely convinced of that. He's going to get he's draft here. picks and more money. Draft picks, more money, <laughs> and and the whole team and the whole city rallying around him because now he comes back as like the hero. Like right. I am here to save the team once again. Brilliant move. I think he totally had it uh, planned. I'm convinced of it. <laughs> Amazing. Pussy. He's not a pussy. He's a big, stinky smell. Rick uh, doesn't uh, like him, I guess. It's all business, pal. I understand. It's all business. I like what he says, too, you know, to the press. Things like, uh, well, uh, I'm in control. For the time being. What is he, Alexander Haig? Yeah. <laughs> he t says, I'm, I'm in control right now, and that's all I think you'd uh, need to know. And they ask him more questions, and he's like, well, I just told you everything you need to know. He gets all belligerent and nasty and stuff. Right. Parcells. He is just, I, I don't know how you, uh, uh, how the sports uh, papers interview this guy. He is just the nastiest son of a bitch. I love it about him. I answered that question. Shut up. What are you, stupid? Yeah. That is the dumbest question I've ever heard. Next. Next. And you just like sit just there. Just pushes oh, him aside. Oh. And, and you're like, oh, oh I just got bashed by the tuna. I thought I was good at what I did with this reporting stuff. So he comes back to the Jets with uh, probably draft picks and more money. Uh, John, what's going on? I, um, I want to know, how do you feel about the Pete Carroll coach thing? Pete Carroll what? He can be the coach of the Jets. Ah! <laughs> Please. <laughs> He effed it up one time yeah, already, we man. We had enough of that guy. We had enough of him. I'm, 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 I'm bummed that the Patriots didn't keep him. He is the worst. Oh, thanks. Bye. All right, John. <laughs> hey, just waiting for the rock. <laughs> Figured I would ask a question while I wait for the rock today. The rock. Hey, mom, can I listen to the Opie and Anthony show today? They're gonna have the rock on. They're not gonna do the lesbian stuff today. I could listen, right? Right? Yeah, I wonder if kids have to ask permission. Oh, without like they, a doubt. They hear the rock is on. It's like, oh, can I listen to Opie and Anthony just today, just for a little while, because the rock is going to be on. I'll turn it right off. <laughs> I think a lot of them are sneaking, like, under their yeah. bed with the radio right now. Sneak your radio out. Mom, they're not doing egg shooting today. They're going to have the rock on. Can I listen for a little while? My homework's done. <laughs> uh, Zeke from uh, Manhattan saying... If you guys interview Tom Hanks, do you want to talk to Forrest Gump? Come on, get uh, get behind the scenes or goof around with him. 
All right, well, well, no, actually, we would want Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, that would be much more fun. And Tom Hanks. All right, uh, I, I see Jeffrey Ross in the wings. Let's get him on the radio next, okay? Ed? All right. Quick break. We'll be back. The Opie and Anthony Show. Grown men jumping all over each other. <laughs> okay, terrific. <laughs> Hey, Anthony Stacker, too, the world's strongest fat burner. Oh, yeah, you remember uh, our good friends at uh, Stacker. They were here with us uh, during the summer. And then I guess they laid off a while, but they're back, Opie. They were they were here during the dark years of the yes. Opie Anthony show. Or Very the, grim. Or the dark months, I the should say. The dark months that seemed like years. But they're back after the holidays. Everyone pigged out, you know. You all uh, had the uh, big dinners with your family, and you plumped up a bit. And the coats are covering them up. Okay. But, you know, spring's right around the corner. You better start losing weight now. And Stacker, too, is the world's strongest fat burn. That's right. What else does it do, Opie? Do you remember the other two things? Uh, yes, I've been studying very hard, Anthony. Okay. Uh, it burns the fat because it is the world's strongest fat burner. Yes. Gives you a boost of energy. Yes. And it also um, uh, oh. cuts the cravings to eat in between um, meals. Very good. That's where you gain a lot of weight. When you yeah, when like snacking. Your fellow employees desk, and they got like the little kisses oh. or cookies or something rolling around there. It's like coconut hostess snowball. <laughs> right. <laughs> How could you pass that up? Oh, with the gooey marshmallowy coating. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner, at www.stacker2.com. That's stacker2.com, or give them a call at 1 800 Lightline. That's 1 800 L I T E L I N E. Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Thousands have proven it works. 1027 WNEW, it's OP, it's Anthony, and uh, entering the studio in just a minute here, Jeffrey Ross, the very funny and talented Jeffrey Ross, Anthony. Yes. Uh, John, what's going on? Hey, you guys, I'm watching TV live. That kid, Elio uh, Gonzalez, he's got a lot of bills in his hand. He's got gold chains around his neck, and he's sitting on his uncle's shoulders. Are you serious? I mean... The guy had an electric Benz the other day. Yeah, a little electric Mercedes Benz he got for Christmas. I mean, my God, I was born in America, and when I was nine or however old he is, I didn't get squat. <laughs> so he's on TV with a lot of bills right now? Yeah. Oh, he's poor sitting kid. on his uncle's shoulders holding a rolled up wad of, like, fives. He's, he's going to be so disappointed next Christmas. <laughs> you, man. Jeffrey he's Ross. And this Christmas in the U.S. with a bunch of sympathetic you know, rubes sending him all kinds of gifts. Back. Right. Well, thank you, John. Oh, okay. all right. what do you got there? Oh, Wait a minute. Cigars? Cuban cigars? Fresh off the uh, plane, buddies. Oh, Jeffrey wow. Ross in studio. You, you, wait, you were just in Cuba? This morning. Are you serious? I got in at uh, 3 in the morning. Really? What were you doing there? I went. Oh, I drove across the country. For Get him years. cans at work. I drove across the country. It was mind-boggling. You're one of the first two people I've spoke to in English in eight twenty days. <laughs> really? I woke up and came here. Awesome. Yeah. Now, what the hell is it? Yeah, look. look he's got a Cuban uh, shirt on. You wouldn't believe what was going on there and there with this thing. Now, how the hell did you get there? I uh, I don't want to talk about that specifically, but I oh, is it illegal? I got in. You something know? is illegal, it's isn't that? Not easy to get there. But well, you got to go to from Canada or something. I went through Mexico. Mexico. Mexico? Yeah, but yeah, that's uh, good with a big uh, plane load of cocaine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Look really at you! Amazing. You look like he looks like he's had some kind of religious experience. Well, it's like really he's neat. been part of a coup or something. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him! He's just all happy. He's and growing the. Uh, Castro type beard. He's wearing military fatigue. <laughs> Whoa! Look at this. There's a T-shirt with a kid on it. We wouldn't it? believe how that's Raft this. Boy. Yeah, yeah, Raft Boy. And, and uh, I only heard coming up here because I just woke up uh, that he's going home. Yeah, they're sending him back. That's today. That just happened. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. What'd you see? I'm sad that I get my news from you guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. Opie and Anthony, your source for news. Well, let me tell you something. That's the only, I haven't heard the news in a week because it doesn't happen there, you know? Yeah. The, the news in, in, in Cuba is seven hours long <laughs> and they only have two stations and it's just, they don't show like a story. Uh, it's one story. Whole event. Yeah. Really? Like they'll have a, a protest, a rally uh, for the kid <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's the whole day's television. <laughs> Oh my God. We show it in real time. You know what I'm saying? That blows, man. The news Come plays on. out in real time. Yeah. It's um, unbelievable. That's like the great. OJ chase, only not as fun. <laughs> now, what, what what's going on down there? I mean, 
What were you doing? Yeah, you got to tell us. You know, turf. I'm a comedian, so you have to have some life experiences. Yeah, you so know, you figured and, uh, going to Cuba. I took off. I, uh, a buddy of mine goes down a lot, and uh, he has basically what has become family down there. Uh, really beautiful people on the other side of the country. Uh, they don't want me to tell what town it is. No I want to keep it preserved okay. and, uh, free of uh, Americanos. Right. <laughs> Look at this. He's all of a sudden turns Cuban. I you can't stinking even... Americans. Look, I he hates us. I got into American <laughs> customs, and I went through, and the guy says, have a nice day, and I said, gracias. <laughs> I don't even, I forgot how to speak English in eight days. I didn't speak to anybody. He's been brainwashed, Anthony. I know. He's starting to believe in uh, Fidel, it looks like. <laughs> Fidel, I bought some Fidel. Cuban cigars. I want to smoke one of those. Definitely. Yeah, we don't we, have to smoke them in here, are we? We had uh, Cubans down in Turks and Caicos uh, when we went down there to do a broadcast. Yeah. All oh, the best cigars ever, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've become... How'd you get them out? Because we were in Turks and Caicos. We were so freaking paranoid we to paranoid. Bring, bring some home with you us. you think it was like Midnight Express. We have them taped to our bodies, and we're going to end up in a Turkish prison if we I get have, caught. Uh, I have ten cohibas up my ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Torch them up. Some, some stink weed. I think one of them is lit. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I took the labels off, so they're completely natural. You know? oh, that's, that's, a good, that's a start. Uh, Joe, what's so, up? It's probably yeah, a... No, I was going to tell you, the, the Cuban kid, he's not going back. What do you mean? Because it's a law here. If any, if any Cuban touches base on U.S. soil... It touches base he's, like uh, a game. He's protected. He can't go back. All the, paper, like, all the papers are saying he's going home. Him being a minor, though, that makes it a little... I mean, the only loophole is maybe that he's a minor. Other and than and that, his father's over there. His natural father's in Cuba, and he wants yeah, I mean, him back. I, think he, I mean, Personally, I think he should go back, because who should... I mean, it's not like his father abused him or anything like uh, that. I'm looking at the paper. It says, U.S. rules, dad gets uh, the kid. He's going home to Cuba. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they're going <laughs> to deploy, but I don't think he's going All home. right. Well, we'll find, All right. Out. we'll find out soon enough. Thank, right. thank you, Joe. Pretty uh, impoverished down there. Though. They made a deal. Instead of Cuba, they're going to just let him live in Newark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to go to Cuba. No, please. Uh, give me my tin shack. Now, this is... I, I, I got this shirt... <laughs> Uh, 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 That's amazing. This, uh, 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 you know, uh, it's easier. There's no. I drove across the country. My buddy. There's no. Uh, there's no street signs and highway signs. Yeah. There's nothing. So if you want to get around, compass. you need to pick people up. Mm -hmm. The whole country hitchhikes. It's there's a lot of love. The people love each other. The people are very happy. They don't have any transportation. All the cars are old American cars and right. Soviet cars. They're from the 50s and 40s. Right. And uh, it's like a time capsule. I can't even breathe from all the cigars I smoke. <laughs> And and uh, we pick up this cop. He wants to go. Uh, he wants to go home for New Year's. He's got to get across the country. He's hitchhiking. Well, another, you know, they they don't have cars, and they don't yeah. have the, the police. To, they don't they don't transport the police to work and back. So he's got to hitchhike. It takes a couple of days to get home. So we pick him up. Jesus. And it's also sort of uh, it makes it easier to get around because if you have to stop for directions, you know, you won't get jerked around. Right. And my buddy had his girlfriend with him, and they're not really supposed to be in the car together, and so on. You follow. So we pick this this cop up, and he winds up. He's all intimidating when he gets in. He's an 18-year-old kid, you know. He's. A, he, he, I had him watching my DVD player, you know, something about Mary on headphones <laughs> with Spanish <laughs> subtitles. And this is a kid who's never heard of Mickey Mouse. Oh wow! And he's a Cuban police. There's no Western culture at all. I'm, right. I'm 10 hours from Havana. You understand? I mean, you're nothing. way in the country. And uh, I'm asking him. I said, "Please, that T-shirt. That's amazing. You could never get that. And what a great souvenir." He's like, "No, it's official. I can never give it away. This and that. This and that." I offered to buy it. Nothing. It wouldn't. You know. And they make seven dollars a month. The police. Okay. Wow, that's like Finally, working here at any W. We, we go the to cops in New York. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they spend that on every day on coffee. <laughs> I would have said donuts, but it's just too hacky. <laughs> And finally, at the end of the trip, he gave it to me as a gift. That's cool. Yeah, they're really uh, very noble people. That's like contraband having a copy of something about Mary. Yeah. Well, you know, down there? He, uh, on DVD, it was like, literally, he looked at it like he watched a lunar landing. <laughs> I bet. That's like, what is this? You know, like crack. Probably have like uh, just the old movie projectors like you had in school. Yeah, and the it's like the know, medium. It was so cool for him to see it. I mean, the, the scene where Ben Stiller zips up his right, and uh, I mean, he's Johnson. laughing so hard. You know, he's never seen a, a, a movie that's he doesn't. You know, there's no yeah. chance. 
That's wild. Yeah, that blows. Yeah. There could be some real prime uh, resort real estate down there if we ever open up some ties with them people again. It's, it looks like it's like the Catskills with chicks. <laughs> <laughs> the buildings are all from the fifties. Yeah. yeah, but yet they're kind of a little bit. They're not. They're old. I, 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 how, how are the women? How are the oh, no, all the women are beautiful. Yeah, are they? yeah, they're all. It's Jennifer yeah. Lopez. Whoa. All over the place. Tony, what's up? Hey, I gotta say something here, man. <laughs> yeah, hit it. I'm, I'm like fed up with this Cuban kid. Hey, this is hypocritical. I don't want to sound prejudiced, but white America is. They line the borders to keep all these freaking aliens out. They shoot them on sight. And here's one kid. Oh, we don't want to give them back. Send the freaking guy back on the raft and be done with it, man. Let send him go back with his father. I think they'll fly him back if they do send him back. I don't think they'll just pop him on an inner tube and shove him off of uh, Florida. That could be pretty funny. We could. Tra- oh my God, we this could, boy kid. We could track his progress on the internet and stuff. See if Rat Boy makes it back to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> the pay per view event to the century. Oh, without a they doubt. absolutely would pay for that. Hell, I'd, I'd buy. That would be a great little video game. <laughs> you know, try to get him back. Try to get Rat Boy back to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> Bad man. So what else are you doing? You're playing uh, Caroline's? I'm at Caroline's, man. Tonight, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Wait, and when oh. did you get in? I got in uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I was oh. still slurring. Were you asleep at all? Did you sleep? I slept a few hours. I woke up. I showered. I got, like, uh. mosquito bites and rashes. Whoa, look at, <laughs> look at wait, you. Wait, you. Wait, pull your sleeve back a little more. I just got home more. from driving across. Dude, the look, at his, look at his arm. Pull your sleeve back. It just start, finally There is are fine. mosquito bites all over your arm. You should see my legs. I look like a leper from Papillon. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was unbelievable. He's warming up, baby. It was so cool. But I'm drinking some cappuccino here. I'm waking up. You're That's sitting- like the jungle you were in or something. It was. I was in no, literally. I was in the jungle. You know, we I got wow. woken up to pigs and chickens. I haven't sat on a toilet seat in eight days. <laughs> Man, I mean, how do you I'm, take a dump? You just kind of squat you know, wherever you want. When nature calls. You what know? about uh, toilet paper? Toilet paper is uh, hard to come by, but uh, luckily the people I stay with, uh, like a oh, bed breakfast own, type yeah. of situation. I mean, uh, type of situation, not a bed and breakfast. You know, you're waking up, you sleep four hours. The people are so happy and such. It was New Year's festive. There's music playing 24 hours a day around yeah. Cuba. I don't care if you're in the biggest city or in the smallest little village. Right. You're happy people dancing. Oh, those women. people love their music. And uh, and it's all like you know like. You know, the words beach and uh, dance rhyme. <laughs> Every song is about the beach and dancing. <laughs> when to go to playa, that's what I like to bala, you know. <laughs> and there's this music all night, so the roosters don't know if it's morning or night. So the roosters are <laughs> all night long. So they don't, you know, the, the country is like a... It's, it's one big uh, fiesta. Little party. And Americans pretty well received. Uh, oh, my God. I thought I was Bruce Willis walking really? around Disney World. It was like, <laughs> you tell them you're American. There's no resentment about what's going on politically mm-hmm. or anything like that. They're just warm, beautiful, giving, very, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a, uh, it's a third world country, but the people are all clean. Their houses are all immaculate. Right. You know, they don't live Jeff, in, they don't Jeffrey's live now in. a communist. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I'm about people. I, I don't know. It was really cool. That sounds cool. We don't, I never thought, like, uh, somebody would go to Cuba and actually have a, a good time. I guess I've been, uh, you know, just reading the line, you know. I, I, saw, don't know, I, I don't know anybody who's been there. I saw a woman, her breasts were so big that she could have gotten to Florida with them. Right? <laughs> she started swimming. She'd never drown. Flotation device. <laughs> Will this experience affect all your one-liners, Jeffrey? That you uh, <laughs> that you do at the roast? Are you going to be a happier person now? They might, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll still be the mean bastard I am all the time. Cynical uh, prick. You, know, I might... you stole the show once again this year at the roast. Oh, we saw it. Good. Oh, without a doubt, we saw it. Jerry still a roast. Uh, yes, because yeah. you were in here promoting it way before, uh, just before the tape. I remember. I wouldn't tell you the jokes before. The B. Arthur yeah. joke. Yeah. Very funny. But B. Arthur's, uh, well, you can't even really say it on the air, but God, I, I almost puked. I was laughing so hard. It's not Sandra Bernhardt. Yeah. I wouldn't her with B. Arthur's slot. Right. <laughs> and uh, Sandra Bernhardt. Wait, I was just like. Well, that was that was painful to watch. The, her oh. Hebrew name is Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like pulling that big steel sweaty handle on a train <laughs> and like the the sparks are shooting out of the wheels like everything's going cold people are funny and everything she comes up 
just grinds to a halt. <laughs> you watch and go, what the I hell is she part, doing? She sang. She sang a magic, magic man. man. Yeah. yeah. I, I I thought she was it was it was funny because Jerry Stiller was dancing yeah, yeah. and his crotchety old body yeah. up there doing the hustle <laughs> was so funny to me. <laughs> well, she probably thought uh, she was the hysterical one in that. Uh, Does yeah. she really think she's Terrible. still funny? I don't know her. You know, <laughs> I, she always she I, every year I do these roasts. They haven't always been on TV, so she knows what I do. Yeah. yeah. So she always splits before I yeah, before just as I go on because she knows that she's in for it. <laughs> she, She'd rather hear about it than hear it. Hear they it don't want person. that reaction shot. For, <laughs> you know, she doesn't want to give them that. You know that that money shot. Uh, I met Billy Crystal and uh, afterwards, and uh, he said to me, uh, "The money showed B. Arthur." After I said that, he goes, "And the look on what is now her face." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. Jeffrey Ross in studio. He's playing Caroline's Thursday through Sunday. God, you got shows all over. I think you're doing like 20 shows between now uh, now and Sunday. And all proceeds will be going to Cuba. <laughs> He's shipping it all off to Cuba <laughs> to buy some rafts for those fine people. I'm not there. making that much money, but it's enough to to uh, take care of a lot of people down there. I bet you live like a king down oh, there on a few bucks. Yeah, but you, there's, there's not you, there's nothing to live. There's, there's no nothing king. to get. There's, there's no king. Get. What am I gonna buy? You get the better mud house, <laughs> <laughs> the two room mud. All right, stay there. Opie, you're a sick ass man. Anthony. You're not a jackass, you're obviously a stud. The Opie and Anthony Show. It makes me sick. 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW, it's Opie and Anthony. Hey, hang with Jeffrey Ross. I guess he's like our new friend. He's been in here a couple times. I like being in here, man. Getting to know him a little bit, Anthony. Yeah. Just got back from Cuba. This Who morning. the hell goes to Cuba? It's amazing. And I've never known anybody that goes there. Really? You, have an, you must have just exhausted every other place on the globe if you chose Cuba. Well, it was between Maine and Cuba. <laughs> Maine, huh? <laughs> no. Nah. You know, it's New Year's. It's a millennium. When am I going to do that? Yeah. It's very rare that I could just disappear, no work. So you spent New Year's, though? Yeah, New Year's Eve. I went to a party. I went to a, bar, a, a party, then I went to a disco. <laughs> the discotheque. <laughs> Let me tell you what this place is like. <laughs> the men's room attendant was a goat. <laughs> <laughs> you throw your garbage on the floor and he eats. Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, it's real. really, really in the middle of nowhere. Third one. Ten hour drive from Havana, which isn't exactly Paris. You know what I'm <laughs> no. saying? A uh, beautiful city and beautiful people, but I was really out in the world. I'm sure you didn't have to worry about the Y2K problem down there. <laughs> they don't have computers yet, so I think you were just fine down in Cuba, I left, right? I left on the 27th, so it was just when Seattle decided not, you know, they were kind of on, maybe we will, maybe we won't. And right. I was Y2K to death. I just hearing it, hearing it, hearing it. Yeah. And I'm talking to this guy uh, uh, right in Havana when I go up. Uh, you know, uh, I asked him about Y2K, uh, you know, uh, in my broken Spanish. And he goes, um, no, no comprendo, que es Y2K. And I said, oh, God, I'm in the right place. <laughs> they didn't even know what I was talking about. That's good. No, it's no. not a good, everything, it's so weird. Could you imagine you go to a, every store, you go to check in uh, at the airport, and they, uh, you give them your locator number, mm -hmm. and they have to write it down and go check and see if you have a reservation. It's not all com Right. Pressing buttons or anything. They're it's, looking through paper. It's people doing work. <laughs> Something you don't see anymore. <laughs> you didn't feel a little scared, though, of uh, the airport? The airport, uh, you know, it's like the people, they can't rob you. They can't rip you off. They can't do that because, uh, you know, if you, if you sell meat, they're not allowed to sell meat. Really? Beef. Mm -hmm. uh, it's six years in jail. Six years for selling meat. You know what I'm saying? So you know you're not going to get taken. It can't happen. <laughs> right. There's a lot of people looking for a hustle and stuff like that, help you find uh, your way around or to find chicks and stuff like that. They'll 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 help you. Plenty of chicks to buy? There's, yeah. Maybe, no. Nah. There's, <laughs> there, there's a lot of beautiful women in Cuba. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave it going. at that because I'm on the radio. God. What, but, uh, what did you eat? The uh, national dish of Cuba is a ham sandwich <laughs> without the ham. <laughs> my 
and tea. You know, uh, I, I, I ate, I stayed at a, a, with friends and uh, way out in, uh, in the boonies, and the food was delicious. We stayed with a great, she was a great cook, and they make do, and they really put together a nice shrimp, and it's by the beach, and yeah. you can really put something together. But when you're on the road in the rest stops, and they have this place called uh, Rapidos, they're like 7 Eleven, oh, no. but with like, they only have three things, and they're the same place all over. It's uh, uh, pizzas with ham on it. They're frozen pizzas. Right. But they're basically mostly bread. A little bit of sauce and cheese. And <laughs> they put some ham on it or you don't have ham on it. Uh, pollo. Fried chicken, which has the texture of steak. Mm. It's tough. Mm. And... Um, Make that two things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, John, what's going on? Uh, how you doing? This is Joe. Oh, Joe, you were in Cuba? Uh, yeah, I performed at Guantanamo Bay down in 88. Uh-huh. Uh, and, um... What are you, stripper? Down near the uh, Marine Barracks, there was this abandoned <laughs> bank on the Cuban side, and they would have workers come in, they would strip search them, coming and going every day. It was uh, quite interesting. All right. Quite interesting watching guys getting stripped there. <laughs> well, you know, it was an interesting thing how, you know, the, what they would go through. But I tell you, it was m very, very wild on the U.S. side, inside the base. So if Jeffrey ever gets a chance to go back down there and perform on the base, I highly recommend it. The uh, military women get awfully lonely down there. Yeah, I bet. All right. Well, All right, thanks, guys. Well, thank you, John. And that's what you want, the Army broads, <laughs> because they're the most attractive ones. <laughs> it's just like stripes. You're going to see PJ Souls in a uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Swear to God. Who's your sergeant? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you're next. What's going on? Hey, how you doing? Um, All right. I was in Jamaica, and they have, like, flights that fly over to Cuba. It, like, takes two and a half hours. And I don't know what part he was in, but I landed, I think I landed in a marijuana field. <laughs> and uh, you got guys with cigars and glasses, just like the movies, carrying Uzi. And it, I don't know where he was. And, you know, dogs, they're eating dog. I mean, it was just, it just well, fucked me out. Full of it. Maybe, you, maybe you missed the island. And... <laughs> I don't yeah, know, but, yeah. you know, I think you were in Staten Island. Yeah, it's Staten Island. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say, guys. Hey, what's that, a train? No, no, you did all right. No duck uh, down there. All right, right thanks. People must be scared. Crap. You know, no, the people are very. Drugs. Yeah, there's no drugs because uh, it's it's the end of your life. Right. Firing squad. Really? Yeah. That's how they feel about drugs. It's a communist dictatorship. There's no <laughs> drugs. There's no. There's no. It's not happening. Someone's got to be sneaking drugs somewhere in that country. It's all about uh, rum. Uh huh. You know, they get rum. It's everywhere. Straight. It's delicious. It's like candy. You know, it's full <laughs> of sugar, and they get it's three dollars a bottle. Right, and it's delicious. They call it Cuba Libre, rum and coke, and it's it's like uh, drinking a lollipop. Mm -hmm. It's so good. They put a lime in it. Maybe yeah. that's where the crack is. <laughs> in the rum. In the rum. The rum and the beers are like, poof, you know, they're really strong. Yeah. I was, I'm I'm borderline. I'm like literally. <laughs> One Christmas party away from being a drunk, I think. <laughs> that's what the commies like doing, keeping their population drunk. Yeah, they were definitely partying. You waking up there, Jeff? I feel great. <laughs> you look tired. No, is that going to be all right today? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to smoke these cigars? Yeah. Uh, you could light up one of the cigars. Really? Yeah, we don't have a boss today, right? No. You want one? Wow, uh, it's going to puff in here. Sure. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> Smoking Cuban cigars live on the show? We got these at Port Authority. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> No, these no. aren't the. These are Monte Cristos. These are. Brand oh brand yes, brand. those are the biggies. Those are the ones we were you smoking. Can get, down you can get one in. I'll. I'll. I'll pass. They say Havana on it. Havana means Havana. Yes. I don't have a cutter. I'm trying to. Uh oh. That could be a problem to get out. No, you bite it. Come on. People cigars. <laughs> He's got a little thing. Yeah, this is cool. Ah, the little This is scissors. fine. We'll celebrate the new year. A little Cuban cigar. And, and yeah. Jeffrey Ross is going to help us out with the rock interview. Rock's coming in in a little while. He's a pussy. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> we're we're kind of concerned because he's got the Rock character that he is on uh, the WWF. But the interviews we've seen him on, he's been uh, Dwayne Johnson, who he really is. Really? He's like because uh, the Rock on like TV what is Sable's like doing like what Sable does. Yeah, you know the Rock is kind of like you know, hey, I'm the Rock and uh, I'm the you know he's always talking about how great he is and everything. And then he's on the interviews, like, yeah, well, I'm um, buying my new book. Uh, 
Um, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, Dwayne yeah. Johnson, The Rock, you know, Snow with The Rock's coach. He wants to act, probably, and you can't act as The Rock. He's easy. Maybe that's What's it. this? Oh, look at that. We're just we got a razor blade. What, are we going to do coke, too? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, we're going to cut these. Uh... He's got, like, the blade. Perfect. Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I need a light. An ashtray and uh, a couple of broads. <laughs> You're all set. <laughs> you got a bunch of little kids outside the studio. Oh my God! What, really? You know what they call? Uh, you know, they call. Uh, we I had a joke. You know, it's really fun for me as a comedian to make people laugh who don't speak English. It's like I'm, who've never seen. What a me. challenge! And uh, the thing that got everyone cracking up is uh, I would call Ricky Martin uh, whenever he came on. Mm -hmm. He would come on in Spanish and the disco and stuff. He can't buy it. But they know what it is. Right. They think all pop music is the Backstreet Boys. They don't. That's the ashtray. And um, <laughs> they think. Uh, they, I called him a uh, Ricky. Uh, my buddy and I called him a uh, Ricky uh, Marty Cohn. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Marty Cohn, and they would crack. That was the funniest joke you could say. A little late with the uh, cigar cutter, but thanks. I knew somebody was going to come down with one of us. I'm going to light mine. There goes mm -hmm. Jeffrey Ross lighting up a big fat Cuban. Fat Cuban. Look at that. We have <laughs> <laughs> we have authentic contraband right here in the studio. <laughs> what a, what embargo? I don't know what you're talking about. Start chewing on that bad boy, man. <laughs> Look at him, man. Puff away. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> 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 Lucy, I'm home. <laughs> hey, Fred. <laughs> and what do you think? Tastes good. Uh, here it matches. You get the other side. <laughs> this place is yeah. going to be a. That's all right. <laughs> you know, this is We're the last show of the day that broadcasts from here, so. I love the studio. <laughs> and what are you thinking, man? <laughs> mm. It's like a. <laughs> nah, it's, it's, they're strong. And yeah. you know what the best cigars are? Mm. They have um, they have uh, the local ones. No, no, no. They have nothing written on them. They're just uh, rolled in these little towns. Yeah, you should have brought some of those home. Oh, he probably did. He's keeping those for himself. <laughs> He's not stupid. It's like literally, it's for like fifty cents. You get ten of them and stuff like that. Yeah, down there, you know. Wow. All right. I'm just going to sit here and puff on a Cuban. That's okay. Uh, patiently waiting for The Rock. I guess we could take another break. And uh, The Rock should be here in a few minutes. We're going to continue our interview with Jeffrey Ross, and we'll bring Rock into the fold as well, Anthony, okay? All right. And don't forget Jeffrey See. Ross at Caroline starting tonight uh, at 8 p.m. Boy, I got a buzz. And playing all weekend. Through Sunday. Through Sunday. Yeah. Masturbation in the car. We can't pass that up. <clears throat> no, no. Uh, I right to that. Katie. That's like breaking news on CNN. <laughs> right. And they just break in. When we get something that says masturbation in the car, we have to go right to it. Katie. Hey, guys. Hi. What's going on? Uh, nothing. I've been trying to get through for ages. Wanted to uh, see if anybody out there ever uh, masturbates while driving in the car. Yeah, we've guys? had a few of those calls. I I've done that, sure. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. On a regular basis. You wait a minute. Yeah, I'll admit it. Jeff, I've masturbated thinking of my car. <laughs> in the car. In your car? Oh, yeah. Long trip. I slept in a car two days ago. How so. long of a trip does it have to be? Then you got to uh, spank one out. Sometimes you get really bored in the car if you're stuck in traffic and stuff. You could you want to pass the time. A couple times I've really done a great job parallel parking, and I would say, Oh gosh, I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just gotta <laughs> rub them <laughs> out. Great, one move. Yeah, Katie. <laughs> I like to play with myself when I'm driving to work in the morning. Well, what about driving home? Well, sometimes, so, yeah. Driving to work in the morning, so uh -huh. you go, so you're at, sitting at work with uh, like stink finger and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Well, you wash up. Well, you got to be a little goopy down there. Well, you know. You don't want. In there. <laughs> well, could you start masturbating? Just touch the outside. Are you in the car now? Yeah. Could you, uh, you know, yeah, let her rip? Well, how am I going to steer? Well, if you do it in the morning, you could do it in the afternoon. Well, I'm not usually on the cell phone at the same time. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think a lot of people do that in their cars, sure. Yeah, we've heard from some people. I think more, uh, amazingly enough, more women than men. Men just, uh, I don't think they could wait to get out to the car. It's not a manly thing to bring up. <laughs> well, no, spanking it out in the car. Katie, hold on a sec. There's a guy in line nine. Speaking of guys whacking it. Greg! Yeah, what's up? What's up? 
Not, it just, she really caught my attention real quick because about three days ago, I just got back from Florida. You know, I love you guys. When I came back, I turned you right the hell on. And I was coming home from the airport, and nonetheless, you know, I'm driving a freaking blazer. So, you know, I'm a little higher up than every average, you know, guy on the road. And what happens? But you look over. And there's a guy looking at another girl in the eye. I'm sorry about that. No cursing. No cursing. Uh, so you, right. you saw a guy looking at a girl, and, and what yeah, was he rewind. doing? All right. So a guy looking at the girl. Thank goodness he was looking at the girl, because I would have flipped. Otherwise, he was looking at her, and he obviously was making a very standard motion with his right arm. That you could only put it into one situation, where he right. was just really getting off in this, and it was just the worst situation I've ever seen in my life. So, I really hope that men never have to run into other guys on the road satisfying themselves. So, uh, what, didn't you just turn away when you realized what the guy was doing? Yeah, I, I sped away when the light turned green. It was at a red light, for goodness sake. Oh, I see. What are you going to do in that situation? You look away. Well, I did look away for... I turned. It's not like every guy on the highway is, you know, whacking it. You can look oh, somewhere. No. But, yeah, but <laughs> when, you, when you're in the situation when you're sitting next to him at a red light, yeah. Are you going to do inch forward so he's out of your view of sight and not think about him? Hell yeah. I try to. All right. Well, thank you. No problem. Bye. Peace. Jason, you're next. What's going on? Yo, what's up, dude? All right. I cra Yo, I crashed my own pipe. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> Wait, I don't know if they dumped out. So you crashed your van, your work van, because you were uh, whacking it? Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I, I, I'm on the road all day. What am I going to do with myself? I'm riding around looking at penthouses. And I slammed into the abutment on the turnpike right in New Brunswick. Yeah, it was pretty funny at the time. My boss didn't think so, but I thought it was pretty funny. That's hilarious. You guys are great, man. I love your show. Hey, thank you, Jason. I've been my band all day long. I, obviously, I have another job now. They fired me, but, you know. Right. All right. Well, thank you. Yo. Very you good. A, you guys have a great new year. All right. You too. Later. I don't know how you can I, I think spank it. it look at car. all the people on the phones that want to talk about it. It's a, mm. it's a common thing. Yeah, I don't know. That's a little rough. Yeah, what happens with the toll? Yeah, really. Oh, you got to time it, right? Oh, here you go. <laughs> you got to time I'm it. Not right. on the parkway. Got to be an open road. The parkway is every 15 feet. <laughs> you got to put it back in your pants. It's like Another a, toll. It's like, hey, the change will come out of my hand. Oh, God. There you go, pal. Oh, my God. The Rock is here. Okay. Oh, let's, is he? Let's take a break. We'll uh, talk to The Rock next. He's freaking huge. Yes. Logie and Anthony. I like that. This is this is debauchery mania. I like that. Prostate exams for everyone. I like that. 1027 WNEW. If you smell what the rock is cooking. It's 1027 WNEW. It's the Opie and Anthony show in studio. Jeffrey Ross. Yeah. And slowly but surely making his way through the. Oh uh, my God! It is the rock. The studio door. Holy smoke! Is the rock. What's up? Look at him. That's him. Jesus Christ. Look at this. Look at the size of this guy. This people's champ is going to kick your ass, Anthony. What? <laughs> oh, no. Hey, bro. What's going on, fellas? <laughs> How you doing? Oh, 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 come on. <laughs> He's the nice rock. Hey, Sandy. What do you think of the rock? What? Oh, look, Sandy's good. Your girlfriend's creaming, Opie. My girlfriend wants to do you, uh, Dwayne. Rock, sir. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You got all the, the girls worked up around the station here today. It's all right. Yeah? It's all right? Everywhere you go, the chicks are chasing you and stuff. Stay in the life of The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> so what, is The Rock a married what's man? A, what's a great one to do? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Married Jeez, figures. Look at that freaking uh, wedding band. Rock on The Rock. <laughs> rock on The Rock. Yeah. And she's pretty cool because... Uh, I guess she's got it, man. Girls chasing you all over the place. Yeah, she's she's good. Yeah, she's, she's supportive. You give her the uh, rock bottom there she knows uh, roll. in the sack. She knows, she knows the roll. <laughs> you give her the rock bottom in the sack. Uh, no, no yeah? way to go there, brother. No, huh? The people, something else. <laughs> right. there's, there's this girl that we got to get to really fast, Sarah. Yes. This girl is losing it, and she re I think she represents every female. In the tri-state area, so we, we decided to throw you on, Sarah. Sarah, right. you're talking to the great one, The Rock. Oh, my God. Oh, I would just love to say you are the sexiest man alive. You have enabled me to have orgasm with my boyfriend for the first time. I put on your video, and every time we do it, we watch your video. And, oh, but you are the best. Oh, my God. Well, thank you, you so much. You know now you can talk to The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you 
you'd be bigger, man. <laughs> What's that? I thought you'd be bigger. You think? Yeah. <laughs> it's a jacket. Don't let the jacket fool you. That's that's Jeffrey Ross, a very funny. It doesn't man. matter who. <laughs> uh oh. Don't mess with me, man. I'm a black belt in karate. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Hello? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Um, I'd like to let you know if the Rock and Tell us what's in store for his character in the future. Uh, well, you know, just to continue to entertain the millions and the millions of The Rock's fans, obviously. Uh, you know, The Rock's going to get back in the title hunt um, pretty damn soon without, um, without giving away too many storylines. Mm -hmm. Why are you talking about him like he's not here? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is, it, is this a girl who watches The, uh, the Rock video? Yes. Oh, I, see. I, I got it for Christmas, and I've been happy ever since. She's I was just wondering, are you going to... Um, by any chance to uh, go to the WWF store in Manhattan anytime soon? As a matter of fact, I was there for lunch today, and uh, I'll be there at the grand opening January 19th. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. See you there. Bye. And you're going to, uh, you'll, you'll see her. She'll be leaving a trail <laughs> for The Rock. <laughs> and obviously, The Rock, you're promoting his new book, and you're doing a book signing tonight? Doing a book signing tonight, yeah, at Tower Books. Right. And uh, been kind of on the go all day and on the go for the rest of the month, for that matter. R Rock, we got we got to ask you, because you, sure. you are a we're in uh, Raw Magazine, like, chewing on your character and stuff. Right? Yeah, you see that? We're in Raw Magazine this month. I saw it. And I'm, saw I'm, the article. Oh, you did? Yeah. And I'm chewing on you. But, uh... <laughs> look, Opie's got your ass in his mouth. <laughs> you can really uh, smell what the rock's cooking there. <laughs> so you're doing the book signing tonight. But I, we got to ask you, you've been doing the book tour today. Why The View? Why, oh the, why the view? Did, did you yeah. feel out of place this morning with Barbara and, and Star Jones and the rest of them? No, not at all. Well, you know, maybe not too many people know this, but they're some of the biggest rock fans there are. Yeah. Meredith and especially Star and Lisa Lang and, uh, of course, Joy. we got to work on Barbara a little bit. She's getting around. She's coming yeah. out to it. The yeah. Rock likes hanging out with the uh, the view chicks, though? Well, the view is good. I did the I did the, uh, did the the view last year, and it was a, it was a good yeah. time, so I decided to do it again. So these yeah. facts, though, if it was between you and Star Jones for a tight end belt, <laughs> you'd be a little bit intimidated. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Rock might do the job for Star. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to meet her in a dark alley. That's all I can say. Uh, she, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so many people want to talk to you. Uh, Jennifer, what's going on? we got The Rock in the studio. Hi. Hi, uh, honey. Okay. Oh, boy. Talk to The Rock now, Jennifer. Oh, I just want to tell him he's, like, my favorite wrestler, and I never used to watch wrestling. My boyfriend got me to watch it, and now he got me a six-foot post of the rock, and I kiss him every night before I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you got to oh, get up early for the sixth grade, though. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Um, I'm 18. Okay. Oh, well, oh, I appreciate that. Oh, uh, yeah. I just want to know, can I have tickets? Um, <laughs> on my birthday, my mom's going to get me tickets front row, but I don't know if I'll be able to. I'm sure Opie and Andy can take care of that. You know what? 18. <laughs> no. She's 8 and 1 or 9. No, you know what? I think we have a, a pair of tickets to the Continental Arena show. Screw it. We'll give them to you, Jennifer. Really? There yeah. you go. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Hold on the line, okay? Those are my you, tickets. Bye. bye. <laughs> Tell Spaz line one. She Sorry, Jeff. She gets a pair of tickets. So what can we expect uh, in this book, uh, Rock? Well, yeah, what's in here? Well, it's pretty candid, pretty open, obviously. I talk about a lot of things. Not only do I talk in the character of the Rock, a lot of it is in the character of the Rock, of course, uh, you know, with your typical rock promo and entertaining rock stuff, but a lot of it is Dwayne Johnson and growing up in the business, growing up in this industry. A lot of things I've seen, uh, you know, we all got our hard luck stories, and, and mine was no different, no worse, no better than the others, and, uh, and in that you see that. And a lot of times, a lot of people see, you know, you take uh, the rock stone cold, that saga right there. A lot of people see that out in the arenas and all the, uh, all the interviews we've done and things like that, and, of course, the matches we've had. Well, not a lot of people dare say anybody other than people in our office and people backstage see exactly what goes on between The Rock and Stone Cold in the back. Intimately kind of go into that and, and just, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things. There's, of course, a very important chapter on Owen and and a lot of it obviously growing up in the business and seeing what I've seen so far. Right. You think uh, Stone Cold will be back? There's a lot of questions. It seems up in the air. He's going in for surgery any day, right? Yeah, I believe he's got his uh, surgery first of January 17th. And, um, yeah, I think he's going to be back. He knows there's going to be one more Rock Austin WrestleMania. I'll see him next year. Right. you got to feel pretty good. You're, like, getting all the heat, man. You better hope he doesn't come back, buddy. That's all you I'm better saying. hope Rock don't come over there and put his foot right in your candy. <laughs> you better hope. 
I'm not afraid of you, man. My dad's a lawyer, mother. <laughs> Jeffrey and the Rock, man. We could have Fight Club. In <laughs> I don't think it would last too long. It would last it's long, true, but... Uh, Mike, what's up? What's up, fellas? All right, you got a question for the Rock? Yeah, I do. Hey, Rock, first of all, let me preface this by saying you are my man. Thank you. Now, oh. there's a rumor going around... <laughs> do you want you something had... stuck up your candy ass? <laughs> There's a rumor going around that you had some sort of uh, breast reduction, shall I say? <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Yeah. It's because you're Samoan, right? Yeah. Well, no, not because I was Samoan. <laughs> <laughs> But you really had breast reduction uh, yeah, surgery? Yeah, it was one of those things where it was, it was like a part of a liposuction deal done. And I had a little bit of fat. I had that taken out. Let uh, me ask you one more question. Did you have like baloney tits or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't baloney. It wasn't anything like a, it wasn't like a Mark Henry tit or anything. Like that. <laughs> hey, you guys got any tickets for me? Uh, honestly, I'm that, in seventh grade. Yeah, but you're not. <laughs> you're not a cute girl that's ready to I have an orgasm. I'll dress up like a cute girl. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'll give you tickets to see me, man. Okay. <laughs> Caroline. Yeah. Uh, I'll wrestle uh, you. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey Ross appearing at Caroline's tonight. Let's not forget him today. All right, All right fellas. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. What? We're kind of pissed off that you got uh, mankind fired there, uh, Rock. You're pissed off that the Rock got mankind fired. Yeah. Did you not follow the storyline or the pink slip match? The pink slip sure. match. I think that the Rock got mankind fired. Well, well it was what you was you or him? What's that? It was you or him well, that had a gun. Prefer it that the Rock been fired. Well, you know, oh, we like mankind too. Mankind's you know? pretty cool. Well, you know? Mankind is no doubt pretty cool. I don't want to diss the Rock or anything like that. You know, uh, but mankind is pretty cool, and I think uh, the WWF could use him. Have him back again? Oh, no, no. Is doubt. Cactus Jack coming back? Man is that Mankind will be back, no doubt. Mm. All right. Cactus may be back, too. We'll see. Yeah. Seems to be growing his beard a little longer, looking a little more like Cactus. He's getting ready. Uh, Matt, what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to know why The Rock. I mean, everybody loves him, but that people's elbow is the lamest finishing <laughs> move I've ever seen. Matt doesn't I mean, mean, I've been watching wrestling a long elbow. time, since like the late 70s. And I remember in the mid-80s, this guy, his name was Coco Beware. He had this I thing called a Ghostbuster that was devastating. I mean, I'm wondering how come uh, such a uh, well-known character doesn't have a better, better finishing move. I love his finishing move. Well, let, let The Rock ask you this. Oh, how exactly are you the authority on finishing moves? All I'm saying is that it doesn't look painful. It really doesn't. Well, you know, you bounce yeah, off the roll, it doesn't you do look, your it doesn't look you painful. Do a dance, and then you drop on the it, guy, and it looks like you barely touch him. It doesn't look painful. So are you are you to uh, tell the Rock that the stunner is physically painful? I didn't say anything about the stunner. I'm just talking about you. Why am I going to talk about someone that's not there? Well, what are you talking about? You really <laughs> don't. You, 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 you actually really I mean, don't even know what you're talking like about. DDD, anything. I've been doing. I've been watching this a long time. It doesn't matter how long you've been watching it. What well, The Rock guarantees this. If you lay your fat ass down and let The Rock drop the fat fingers ass, elbow on you, funny. then trust him. Okay. You know what? Hey, The Rock says I it, it's, wish it's, you it's, would do that to me because I would, I would take you for everything you have. Well, oh, I, 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 I will say this. He's I bringing in his finisher move, the lawyer. I mean, hey, I'll I tell you what. Well, the, the, rock is, the Rock is easy to find. Is, is that a <laughs> the Rock is easy to find. Is that your move or can you make it up? All right. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chris, you're next. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey Rock. What's that? What What's your uh, real name again? Dwayne. It doesn't matter what your <laughs> real name is. The Rock didn't even answer you, Jabroni. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It just matters now what I'm cooking. Uh, All right. Well, you guys really know how to attract them. I'm just going to let well, you know. Well, let me tell you, we sure share a lot of the same demographic as WWF. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. We got a lot of the same, uh, you know, listeners as uh, you guys have viewers. You know, it's the young uh, male audience. <laughs> Aside from, I'm sorry, Rock, uh, the ladies coming out in droves for the Rock. At times. You ever see some of those signs and get that pissed <laughs> off? Some of the funny ones out in the audience? They catch your eye? Oh, yeah. Never yeah. get pissed off at them. No, that's just their fans being uh, creative. Do they make you laugh inside when you're trying to wrestle, when you see some of those things? Uh, yeah, they make me laugh when I'm not even inside. <laughs> <laughs> just cracked up. All There's right. something about seeing a sign that says a big red retard. There's something about that. <laughs> yeah. The picture gang. That was me. <laughs> Rock believes it. Is it true that you're going to wrestle Chief J. Strongbow? What? <laughs> you don't remember that guy? Yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember Chief J. <laughs> What kind of question is that? You guys actually pay this jabroni? Uh, he came in to plug his gig at Caroline's. <laughs> See, can't, you, can't you tell he's a very funny man, right? What's is jabroni? Right? What's jabroni? Well, what's his gig at? at where? At, I'm, a, I'm in the circus. Is that right? <laughs> he just got back from uh, Cuba. 
this morning. But and he, uh, he's been handing out the Cuban cigars and stuff. You want one? No, not for me. You're a health freak, I bet. <laughs> You're a very good looking man. I'm not gay, but I would definitely. <laughs> I was. <laughs> This is the best looking guy I've ever seen. I can't believe you're no scars, no nothing. Inside. I understand. On the heart, man. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of scars that he'll talk about in his book. Book signing tonight. Uh, we have a few more minutes with you, Rock, or what? Yeah. All right. Uh, quick break, and we'll be back. Stay there. Dudes with Tudes. Well, I think every time we open our mouths, we're, we're pissing someone off. Opie and Anthony. Yeah, yeah. We're out of control. We're so wacky. All right, knock it off. 1027 WNEW. If you smell what the rock is cooking. Uh, you got that right. We got the rock live in the studio, Anthony. Yes. Actually, Dwayne. Dwayne Johnson. Do you want us to call you Dwayne? Rock Dwayne. The rock is his Hebrew name. All the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1027 WNEW. Jeff, Jeffrey Ross also in studio. Appearing at uh, Caroline's tonight through the weekend. And uh, the rock promoting his book. Yes, The Rock says. The Rock says. There's some great anecdotes in here. Have you been studying up on The Rock, Jeffrey? Can I read a couple lines? Is it all right? Yeah, go ahead. Chapter, uh, the, uh, page 277. With the success, of course, has come a fair amount of criticism, most of which is either unfounded or misdirected. It's funny. I don't recall Brian De Palma getting that much heat when he directed Scarface. I don't recall hearing anyone jump all over Steven Spielberg for the violence and... I don't know, man. I, <laughs> who was a ghostwriter with you? Mike no, Tyson? Sure. Like, <laughs> Mike Tyson. Oh, my God. No, no, that came directly from me. <laughs> well, a lot of the uh, criticism from the uh, violence, I guess. Well, wait a minute. What's the problem with Joe Layton? Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. just oh yeah, now you're back in yeah, yeah, real quick. Look at him back I mean, I, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm afraid of you. I'm trying to act, I'm trying to act tough, but I'm definitely a little afraid. Just, uh, and they make me sit next to you. It's not like they hide me in the corner either. We, we I'm practically on the guy's lap. We placed you there on purpose to have him as a buffer. We have this all this counter space. We're that buffer. Yeah, we're scared. What? We're a, a buffer. No, a buffer. <laughs> a buffer. A buffer. Sorry. Yeah, we're just kind of scared of you. We're like pencil yeah. neck geeks. So the holidays. Are, uh, yeah. So it's clear that you haven't been working out. Have you just There's took the holidays <laughs> off? Yeah, I've just been kind of sick. You should get your act together because Rock, we are waiting for you to just pummel him. You can do it at any time. Might not be worth the rocks. What's yeah. with the watch? Is that a Rolexo? What is that? Exactly? It is. I, I got that off Forty uh, Eighth uh, Street. Guy named Rico over there. She bought one that works. <laughs> She's the one that bought one that's worth a little money. You know the Rock. Have you ever, have you ever seen what the Rock does in the ring? Yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, Stone Cold. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he actually likes uh, Goldberg. He told us off mic, and yeah. and we don't even talk about the WCW in our show. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm a big wrestling fan. I love yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, the Rock doing a, si a signing at Tower Records. Uh, where is this? Uh, East Fourth Street and Lafayette in, in the East Village. I hear it's a mob scene already. It's been really? a mob scene since what? 5 a.m. this morning. I'm here. Man, a ton of people want to talk to The Rock. Let's go to the phones here. Uh, Mike, you're next. What's going on? Finally, I'm off hold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Rock, uh, oh, I just wanted to ask you, what's the deal with you getting your ass kicked lately? <laughs> lately? Well, yeah, I mean, every time you go out, you're getting pounded. Man, you, are you referring to Raw where it was three-on-one and The Rock still won that match? Is that the one you're talking about? That's true. But Thank but God uh, Mankind yeah, came in and it saved it your uh, saved candy it. ass. If I may say, Candy. Well, you may not say that to The Rock. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Rock. I felt uh, like there we were uh, oh, I felt we knew each other a little better now. Absolutely not. <laughs> Which I must say was a very good job Security. Security. And beating up those guys. But uh, I, got, I got another question for you. When, when you're at the arena coming up? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he knows about it. Are you, you, you going to talk, talk at the Continental Arena or are you just going to wrestle? Is The Rock going to talk or just wrestle? Yeah, are you gonna do? Are you gonna do your uh, your thing? Are you gonna get up on the ring rope? Are you gonna Are you gonna go nuts and you know <laughs> get the crowd going or what? Yeah, that's likely. All right, because I've heard rumors that a lot of times if it's not heat or raw, um, you guys don't do any talking. Uh, no, not with not with the Rock. Not no. Every right. single night, it doesn't really matter whether it's a heat or a house show or raw SmackDown. It doesn't matter. All right, cool, man. I'll definitely see you there. All, All right. right, thank you, no, Mike. No, no more. Who are you? <laughs> Yes, how you doing, guys? You're next with The Rock. What's up? How's it going, guys? Uh, Rock, I want you to take Jeff and and check him in to the SmackDown Hotel right now. 
You don't like Jeffrey Ross making fun no. of the Rock? <laughs> Come on, I'll give you a piece of my water. mind. I'll give you a ride on my boat. I got my own move. All right. You got your own move? Yeah. The hell do hey, you even mean by that? It's called the tickle. Do you have a question for the Rock? Yes, Rock. Uh, I rub my you, head uh, in your belly. All right. Take care of somebody in the Royal Rumble right now. What's that? Say that again. Who are you going to take care of uh, on the uh, Royal Rumble? Uh, well, right now it's probably uh, probably just going to be in the rumble itself. All right, mm. uh, Dan, you're next with the Rock. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? Hey, I'm just a big fan of you guys. And I want to call up and talk to the Rock. Hey, Rock. Hey, man. Hey, uh, listen, I know you got you've been doing some TV shows here and there, and I was wondering if you're going to be on any more anytime soon. Um, it doesn't matter. What's <laughs> the <way. laughs> you know much crap. <laughs> You're rock, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> got you got the rock. Easy, you got the rock. How many times a day does that happen Constantly. to the rock? Constantly. Constantly. People throwing your lines back in your face. Constantly. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> See what you started, Rock. Jesus Christ, it's got to get a little frustrating. <laughs> uh, Joe, you're next. What's going on? Joe, you're next. We lose Joe? All right. Um, Sal, you got a question for the rock? Uh-oh. Uh, Sal, Sal, you're next. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, hey, Rock, what's up? Hey, man. Oh, and I... Hey. Yeah, I just saw uh, Rock, I heard a few rumors that you're going to be totally changing your appearance and your personality and everything. No. No truth to that. Because uh, there's all that crap on the Internet that you can't hardly believe and stuff. All right. <laughs> and uh, I got a uh, suggestion for O&A. Yeah. Uh, instead of having a train wreck, which is good, yeah. you should have Rock come up with something and start to play that like... uh. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. He doesn't know what you're talking about, but we'll we'll talk we'll tell him off air. Ah, uh, you guys rule. All right. uh, you're the, you're the, the great one, like and uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look how nervous they all get. It's hysterical. All, all right. right, no. All right, Sal. Thank all you. Right. All right, uh, Mike, you're next with the Rock. What's going on? Hello. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, what's up, guys? What's up? Uh, Rock. Uh, you're the great one, right? <laughs> so listen to me. <laughs> why, why aren't you getting any push? You lost to the boss man. Uh, what's up with that? We need to call Vince. <laughs> That's boss man. He he sold your brony off the street. <laughs> All right. All right, Mike. All right. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Later. Because, uh, <laughs> cute kid. Rock, because of you, we have all the kids listening today. They, they begged their moms to listen to the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had to uh, hold off on our shows we usually have. We have. Um, well, one of them we had was a girl that uh, shot an egg out of her vagina. <laughs> Nine feet. Wow. So usually the kids don't get to listen. But uh wonder why. <laughs> you should have been here for that show. And you think the WWF is shocking. You should say this show oh my <laughs> God. on a daily basis. Although the Moolah Mae Young thing, what, what do you personally think of that whole thing? Uh, it's entertaining. Yeah. It I, certainly is. When you see a half-nude old broad getting thrown over the top <laughs> rope, how the hell do you change the channel? It's impossible. I'm I'm glued to the screen when that happens. You you don't have to deal with them, though, right? They don't usually uh, put you in any matches. No, with them. Uh, The Rock's really not currently involved with the Moolah May Young storyline. Yeah. Thank God, right? <laughs> Although, is Mark Henry a really a banging that old broad? Because I really can't tell. It seems like he is really romantically involved with he may be. <laughs> Knowing him, right? He, he may be, just picture. for the record, he may be. Picture that scene, man. Hey, when's Vince coming back? He's on his uh, six-week vacation no, no, or something? Pretty, pretty soon. Yeah, because we're getting a little tired of the Stephanie storyline. <laughs> it was fun at first, but now it's time to move on. Yeah, Stephanie and uh, Triple H. She's got to stop making that, that um, Shane face. You ever see her, Stephanie, making a shame face like you just smelt a bad fart? <laughs> he, like, puckers up the lips. She does the same thing. Puts them up like it's like they're smelling what the rock is cooking <laughs> after uh, Chinese or something. I don't know. All right, Anthony, you're next with the rock. What's going on today? Rocky, what's up? Hey, man. Listen, man, I know you got to show a little respect because uh, I saw Triple H and uh, he's married to her. But what do you think about China? Is she hot or what? Yeah, she's not bad. Are not you, bad. Are you digging her? Well, mm. you know, those cans, man. <laughs> she's looking a lot better than she used to. You're not I'll give her that much. That's you know? for sure. Rocky, man, you're the she best. Cleaned Keep up it up, real right? nice. I appreciate it. Take care, man. All right. There's a guy on the line that said he went to school with you. Uh, Chris. Yeah, Rock. Hey. How's it going? Hey, man. Yeah, hey, I was just wondering, uh, when are you going to come up with a new line? Yeah? Don't you think your line's a little played out now? Uh, no, not really. Not you, at may, all. you may think it. Yeah, I think a lot. But of it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> so, you know what? 
Let me ask you another question. No, seriously. I got a good line for you. Now, I've, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> that would catch on. That could be That's the next one. Right there. Uh, Scott, you're next with The Rock. What's going on? Hey, how you doing, Opie and Anthony? What's going on? All right. Rock, I just to say, you're one of the greatest performers I've ever seen on TV, man. I right now, I got my I got my three year old son running around my house telling me what the rock is cooking. <laughs> and you guys are great on that. You know, well, thank work, you. Man. All right, thank Appreciate you. That. Like Thanks I said, the man. accolades just coming in. It's amazing. All our listeners are tongue tied with the rock in studio today. Yeah. Uh, are you going to be moving on to like movies, sitcoms? You want to do all that stuff? Or? Yeah, I've done a lot of television work, but oh, we've seen the I'm commercials probably, and stuff. Uh, <laughs> They're hilarious. Probably, uh, probably this year. Yeah, venture off on the movie. Right now, yeah. you a big uh, Elvis fan? Is that oh, yeah. true? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Can you sing us a line, maybe? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Like, like, uh, no. 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 Like, come on. The guys. book's got awesome pictures, man. <laughs> it does. This picture of you and Andre the Giant as a little kid. Let me see. Look at that. That's you as a kid? How'd you meet him, man? How'd you meet him? Wait a minute. That's you as a kid? It is. Yeah, easy. The rock's looking good there. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's I'm just say. that picture out. I, I could relate to the hairdo. That's a cool one. <laughs> That's right. I could definitely relate. Was he a cool guy? Yeah, yeah, real cool, cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right after that was snapped, he uh, threw a uh, rock to the floor. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable moment. Wow, that's something. Sporting the fro. That's it. During the early days, yeah. Boy, that was a curse. I remember that. My hair just like, poof, like a big dandelion head. You know? I had the same thing, Rock. I understand. I know where you're coming you from. You feel the Rock on that one. I feel your pain, yeah. <laughs> Dan, you're next with the Rock. What's going on? Rock, Opie, and Anthony, what's up? How you doing? All right. Hey. I want to ask the great one who he looked up to as a kid who is his favorite wrestler all time. Favorite uh, wrestler? Well, obviously, you know, I looked up to my dad and my grandfather who were in the business, but uh, I'd have to say probably the... Entertainers would have to be probably uh, Magnificent Morocco, uh, even including Ric Flair as well. Mm -hmm. Keep mm. up the great work. You guys are awesome. Rock, you are the great one. I'm not going to bother you with doing any of your uh, tacky catch lines, but I just know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Eddie, you're next with The Rock. We only have a few minutes left here. What's going on? Yeah, I just want to ask The Rock uh, what he thought about when the road dog was on your show and he was talking all that trash about him. Oh, yeah, the road dog did talk a little trash about The Rock. Oh, right? yeah, it almost sounded like you two, uh, really you know, we're like talking you, real life, uh, kind of have a little, you know, tiff going. No, there's no tiff with The Rock. There's a tiff with Road Dog. You know, he's the type of guy who's kind of insecure at times and very <laughs> jealous, and it's just that simple. Uh -huh. When are you going to lay the smack down on him again? Uh, when, uh, whenever I get the, uh, the script. <laughs> All right, Rock, you want to go one-on-one -on -one with me? <laughs> No, you might hurt the rock, man. Nah, that's right, you Sounds know like that. A tough dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right, yeah. Rock, you're great, Rock. I'll talk to you later. Appreciate right. it. Hey, Rock, does it ever get real in the ring when you really don't like the guy? Like you give it a, a little extra push or something? No, nah, not really. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much professional in there, and the rest of the guys in WWF are professional guys. Right. We got an issue. It'll have, be handled back back in the back, and then never in the ring in front of everybody. Right. That's just. Nice curse from the rock. Rock on that one. <laughs> all right, but it is what it is. You know, all right. if anyone got on book too. Curse in the book. Too. What, what's your uh, personal view on uh, toning toning down the whole damn wrestling thing? Because it pisses us off. All these people coming out of the woodwork saying it's too violent and. Well, it's easy to say that. It's easy to say that. You know, on network television, you'll find a lot worse. Mm -hmm. We don't murder people, obviously, on our show. And a lot of times our show is reality-based, but at the same time, you'd be an idiot to think that it's completely legitimate because it's not. I remember seeing the boss man getting uh, hanged. That's right. <laughs> That's true. Wait a minute. That looked like murder to me. But then, like... Uh like Wiley Coyote, he was back the next day with no problem. That's right. I was like, wait a minute, they hung him yesterday. What happened? Some stuff's real. That blood on on Austin's head sometimes. I don't know. That seems real. There's a, there's a lot of real seems things. Painful. Yeah. Well, the blood's real. Yeah. yeah. All the blood's real. All right. Oh, any uh, contact that maybe shouldn't have happened? I see a lot of times. Uh, looks like X Pac doing that spinning back kick. How the hell you know where that's going to land every time? Well, that's just one of those. That's a hell of a kick. You kind of just got to suck it up. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I swear to Christ, to just smack someone though. in the side of the head. You see, I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, he just kicked him in the head. Right. Bleeding. You ever catch anything uh, from X-Pac? Off guard, yeah. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's yeah, a little it's pipsqueak business, anyway, though, good. compared to The Rock. Look at you. <laughs> right? You break him in half. Uh, Mark, you're next with The Rock. What's up? Anthony is such a wuss. Why? Why, 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 why don't you do your impersonation of him? Uh -huh. 
What? The great one. Do your impersonation to his face. What impersonation? The impersonation you always do when you talk about him. I don't know what you're talking in a about. Loving, in a loving way. He doesn't trash The Rock. I don't trash The Rock. He doesn't trash The Great oh, One. My. It's yes, like everybody uh, does an impression of The Rock. All right, wait. What, what has he said, Mark? He said, he's always saying, you know, oh, I'm going to take this and stick it up this. and he, You're always saying. Well, Mark, why don't you take that telephone, <laughs> shine it up real nice, turn that son of a bitch sideways, and stick it straight up your candy ass. <laughs> That old, that old gag rock, you know. <laughs> I don't show him. <laughs> He's rolling his eyes like, oh, I'm sure God. for a second people are looking at each of us thinking, who's the rock <laughs> in here, you know? You really can't tell. <laughs> All right, shut up, Mark. Uh, Matt, you're next. What's going on? Hey, guys. How's it going tonight? All right. Uh, rock, I ever wondered, with so many cool heels and the lack of, like, hated heels, I was wondering if you ever had to turn the rock evil again. Would you ever think about bringing back third generation superstar Rocky Maivia since like everybody pretty much hated him? No, not necessarily because he, not necessarily because he was a baby face. I, you know when the when Rocky Maivia became the Rock, the Rock went out there and and uh, you know he he crapped on the people. He did what he had to do to get legitimate heel heat. He did that and uh, you know made no bones about it. Um, you know, would say, hey, this ain't sing along with the Rock and <laughs> Good Night Trailer Park Trash every single night. Um, no, I, I think if the time were ever to happen where the Rock would turn heel again, he, he wouldn't have to go back to Rocky Maivia. He just had to kind of uh, do exactly what he what he has to do. And you know, there's still a lot of arrogance, and there's still a lot of uh, a lot of arrogance, a lot of confidence, a lot of a lot of things you still see in the Rock now. You know, it just so happens he's a baby face. You know, but when the time comes, and and it'll eventually happen, whether it's two years or four or five years down the road, he'll just be the, still the same Rock. You'll just hate him. All right, thanks a lot, man. You, uh, good luck with your future, right? Appreciate it. All well, right. well, that's the funny thing is you didn't even try to be a good guy. I right. mean, it just happened. Like, he'd go out there and say he was the people's champ, and the people were like, no, you're not. You know, you just like being pompous and saying, I'm the people's champ. And then after a while, it just caught on. You brainwashed everybody. <laughs> you hypnotized them or something. <laughs> so like, yeah, he is the people's champ. <laughs> hey, Chris, what do you have for The Rock? Rock, this is one of the millions of fans. I was calling to find out what kind of injuries you've ever sustained in the ring. Uh, in the ring, other than a couple of knee injuries, had uh, a couple of surgeries already. Uh, that done shoulder injuries all the time. Pretty much your typical bumps and bruises. Yeah, you can see time and time again, you see like black and blue marks on some of the wrestlers from going off the ring and everything. What about when you flip over the top? What's that do to you? <laughs> well, you won't see too much flipping over the top from the rock. Not like the Hardy Boys or anything like that. Yeah, they get into it. With the, that ladder match is still one of the most amazing, phenomenal, yeah. amazing things I've ever seen. Uh, we got Sick Boy in the studio. He, he's like a wrestling expert. You got a quick question for The Rock there, Sick Boy? He's been chomping at the bit all afternoon. Yeah, I was actually kind of curious about it. Remember the, uh, the MTV special over the summer? They had uh, the feature on Tony Atlas, who was your dad's tag team partner. I was kind of wondering if you saw that and what you thought about they they kind of highlighted some of the the hard times that tony's gone through over the years and him talking about being so desperate that he wanted to kill himself and all that and just what your thought on it was you know with your dad being his partner well uh before the rock actually answers that just out of curiosity uh you know the rock's heard of your name and the rock's got a question for you regarding your website so. <laughs> oh no <laughs> Actually, I had no idea it was you uh, who, was, who goes by the name of Sick Boy, but right. uh, it was brought to my attention last night from the office that your website carries a lot of racist comments, and I just want uh, I want to hear about that. And for the most part, I just want to know, it sounds like all you guys are friends, and if you guys had known that this is a guy who has racist comments on his uh, website, and if, in fact, you guys are behind that. Oh, I've seen his website a few times. He's got a, a bunch of writers on there, and uh, I think they just open it up to everything. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think there's anything ever been racist, no more than any of the humor that goes on in this show. Well, hey, now, don't, well, don't blame our show. No. <laughs> don't lump us into that. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, after it was read, a couple of lines were read yesterday. The officer called me, read a couple of lines for me, said uh, something like, you know, the Rock being half black, half Samoan, doesn't know whether he should go uh, rob houses or eat food or whatever it is, and saying uh, Jacqueline's from the jungle and, and Mark Henry, something about a, you know him being a gorilla or a monkey or something like that. So 
elaborate on that. Mm. If that's the case, if you guys are behind this guy, then really, I, I really don't even want to be here for that matter, and I certainly don't want to talk to you. Well, if, I mean, if there's been any, I mean, th this is nothing that's been written by me. I've got a staff of 15 writers that are on the site, and the site is done as an, an entertainment site, uh, you know, adding humor and just commentary on what goes on in wrestling. I haven't seen anything that was racist on the site. If there was any, anything that I ever saw as being too extreme, it would be gone in a heartbeat. You know, there's been plenty of stuff that gets... Well, being saying that uh, Jacqueline is, is from the jungle and Mark Henry's a monkey and whether or not The Rock wants to rob houses because he's half black or he wants to eat because he's half Samoan, quite frankly, I find that offensive. Well, I haven't seen that. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen those posts at all. I don't know if anybody else has. And I'll be honest, I've, I've never read any of that. Uh, I mean, I've I've never seen one thing up on uh, up on my site that that would ever be racist because that's not you know that's not how I was raised and that's not how I would run a website. Well, it's on there. Well, I haven't seen it on there. If it's on there, it will absolutely be removed. But you know, I I absolutely do not condone nor do I you know support any of the statements made. But and if you know somebody on there has made racist comments like that, they're absolutely going to be fired. Can I be excused? Whoa. <laughs> really? Wow. All right. Well, for the most part, it's one of those things where, uh, again, I was contacted, I was made aware of it, and the, uh, the office was made aware of it, and uh, and quite frankly, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want to answer your questions. And if you guys have anything to do with this guy, I quite frankly don't want to have but anything I, to do with you guys. Honestly, I've, I've never read any of that stuff on the site, and that's yeah. the honest truth. No, we have, we, yeah, we, have, we have him on whenever uh, we have wrestlers on. He's a... Uh, an expert knows a lot about it. We have that on. I don't know anything about any uh, racist uh, uh, postings. Uh, like I said, we don't we don't condone that either. Yeah. Well, I was brought to my attention last night. But and it was read to me over the phone in, in detail. When you have when you have a, an open forum, especially on the internet, there's not really much you can do about. about well, that. apparently it was from the writers who you must employ somehow. <clears throat> Well, they're not they're not paid writers at all. They're just they're hired based on their writing skills. But if I had known somebody was posting that kind of for crap, that matter. well, you know, I apologize for anything that you may have taken offense to. I absolutely, you know, do not condone that type of writing, especially on my website. You know, it's something that I put a lot of hard work into, and it's been up for two years now. And you know, we've we've put a lot of energy and a lot of money into it to make it something to be proud of, and for something like that to be on it is a black eye to the to a black eye to the site, and it's a black eye to me. And you know, I apologize to to you and Jacqueline, and you know anybody else from the WWF who, if somebody had made a comment like that to them, then uh, they will absolutely be gone. Hmm. You mean African American site? All right. Enough with that. <clears throat> wow, boy, that sure turns around uh, quick. Look at that. What the hell are you doing? So what else, guys? Let's wrap this up. Yeah, no problem. Ah, oh. ah, oh. ah! Oh. God damn, you you ruined our interview with The Rock. <laughs> what the hell? We were all having fun. All right. Well, we still want to thank you for coming by. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. I mean, absolutely. I hope you don't hate us. Well, no, I mean, if, if, you, if you know of this, and, I, and, and, and if you're I am giving telling you, me the truth, wait, wait. if you know of this... I'm, gi I'm giving you my word. You don't know what much about me, but I honestly have never read anything like that on his website. And that is my, my word. I'm not backing down or anything. I've never read anything like that. And that's the God's honest truth. All right. I well, believe it's there. I'm not going to lie, but, you know, if you say it's there, but... I was pretty much there, you know, for the most part. Again, I was brought, aware, was brought to my attention last night, sat on the phone for a good couple of hours, and... Uh, Made the publicist aware, and I, I had no, di no idea it was him, but uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, book signing starting at 7 tonight, Tower Records, East 4th Street, and Lafayette in the East Village. Got to thank The Rock for stopping on by today. I can't even believe these morons. He's a disgusting little man. What a douchebag. Train wreck radio. Thank you. This is sicker than Faces of Death. 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW. Oh. Who the hell just turned off their radio? Hey. Once again, it's Opie and Anthony. Jeffrey Ross still in the studio. I don't know if he wants to be uh, associated with us anymore, but... Oh, my God. That was crazy. That was cringe radio at, at its best. Jeffrey Ross playing Caroline's tonight and all weekend long. Call Caroline's for tickets, but he is... Thanks for having me on, you guys. He will be there. He will be there uh, tonight at 8. 
Holy, my, I am like shaking. Flip from a asening on instant feedback. Never have I heard your show come to such a screeching halt. <laughs> nice way to kill an interview, sick boy. <laughs> wow. Man. That was some of the most uncomfortable radio I have ever heard. Poor sick boy. Send all complaints to WDB at xwrestling.com. The dude. He's the guy you want. All right, thanks. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> oh, man. He just ran right out of here, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he, he walked right out. I swear to God, it was like a train hit me heading out the door. Talk I got about hit by the train. Crasher. Oh. It was just, wow. You know, and He was that, having such a good time. Yeah. He was going to cut like liners for our show. And, and he saw the white devil. And there was, uh, <laughs> wow. there was a bunch of people out there waiting to get pictures and autographs, and he just whoosh. Right through the crowd. He said goodbye to me. <laughs> yeah. He shook my hand. He said nice to meet you. Oh, we didn't get a handshake or nothing. No, he just turned his... I, you know what? We're, ah, all of a sudden... Donna. Uh, yes, I'm here. What's up? I, very, very uncomfortable. Did he even leave? I mean, was it cordial? Or is he? did he shake me with his hand walking out? Or No, when I was given the plug for the book and the book signing, he just turned right around and walked right out. Walked out. Wouldn't shake our hand, nothing. Very, very uncomfortable. I swear. I feel bad for Jeffrey Ross. <laughs> he shook Jeffrey's hand. That was about it. I, uh, very, very odd. How'd that um, happen? Wow. You know, not, I'm not going to... Uh, we had no idea what was on the xwrestling.com site. No clue whatsoever. Hey, good. And, well, I, well, that's and I know as he's, he's walking out, he thinks, you know, we, we knew all along what was on there. You know, I say good for him because Thank he handled you, himself with a lot of class in a very uncomfortable situation. He didn't, uh, he didn't, you know, he had to do what he has to do. Well, no, no, to tell you the truth, uh, yeah, on one hand, uh, sure, you're right, the way he handled uh, Sick Boy. But I don't know, because Sick Boy is on this show, uh, I think he kind of looped us into this whole thing. And uh, the interview fell apart. I think he feels that we are in some way involved with the website and with uh, you didn't make anything he might find objectionable. I, I think I made it clear. I don't think so. I, I still didn't know when he left. And if you look at the website, it looks like you guys are involved with the website. At how least does that look, portion. How does it look like that? If you look, at, if you look at that portion of it, it looks like you guys said this stuff. That we personally said it? Yeah. It makes you guys sound, it makes it sound, if you read it, and it's taken out of if people are just reading what, lines off. It. What is it? A mock interview? Of it's us? Mock interview. Yeah, it's a mock oh, interview that goodness. was done yesterday. And I just, I just want the point to be made clear in case anybody. Oh, it. I didn't write it. <laughs> it is on xwrestling.com, which is my site. Dude, but stop, I plugging <laughs> right. yeah, stop plugging really, your website. Yeah, stop plugging your website and go yeah, home really. and delete yeah. that thing. Don't worry about it. What's your problem? It's okay. I'm just pissed. Because he left here thinking that, you know, we had everything to do with that. We didn't. Yeah, we got to know is. that. We get in enough trouble on our own. I don't need people accusing us for stuff that we didn't do. And we didn't do anything. We're completely innocent. As in far part. No, as far as he is concerned, having Sick Boy on our show, we are involved. And in that case, he's right that we do have him on the show. We're not involved with the website. We're not involved in any other way. But I think him uh, knowing that we have him on our show is enough. That it pissed him off. He must be very sensitive when it comes to uh, racial uh, stuff. He entertains <laughs> kids. He's got to be. Ah, I need another beer. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> can we light up the Cubans again? <laughs> you want to burn Cubans? What? <laughs> hey, who's this? Is that a train? Danny. Huh? Danny, uh, what, Danny, what's going on? Not much. Yeah, I just wanted to call in... Uh... I think the way he left was kind of messed up, you know, because all you guys did was praise him the whole time, and, you know, he just turned his back on you real cold hard, you know? You know, I'm starting to get a little pissed off now that I'm thinking about this, and now that he's gone. Um, <laughs> I mean, does he have a problem with the Godfather? When the Godfather comes out pimping hoes 24-7 and, and yeah. smoking uh, joints and stuff? That no, seems to be a, a racial stereotype. See, the whole thing is, though, you know, like, you guys may have... They have so high up on the show, you know, and they just turns it around because he reads something on the website that had no control over you or the station, you know. Yeah. And it's just it's foul, you know. I mean, you guys, you what? guys, I am on. You praised him up, and you know, he just walked out like a real jerk off. 
Yeah, you know, I have so many things going on in my head right now. It's like he said he spent two hours, uh, you know, on the phone about this last night. Yeah. So he he should have brought it up as soon as he walked in the door. You because, know, because wait, 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 wait. Because uh, if it looks like it's a mock interview that we did with The Rock, so obviously it, it looks like we're associated with what was said on XWrestling.com. He should have, uh, you know, confronted us as soon as he walked in the door. Dude, I read that post, that's and definitely. it's obvious. It says it at the beginning. It's a fake mock fantasy interview. You, it, know, you, you would have to be a complete buffoon to think that that's that was real. Yeah. You know, even that, if he did have a bone to pick with you guys, he should have brought it up right when he got there. You know, and just just made his point. He didn't know. Instead of walking in and yeah, you know yeah, putting know you guys into a bear trap. <laughs> It, I, I got to say, and I've been doing a, a lot of radio. This this has been the most uncomfortable moment in the history of my damn radio career. Well, when, oh. when Sal hey, was on man. the phone with my mom, no, uh, that's second at this point. Aunt. What's what's this? The thing that really bugged me was the fact that if they were looking at that for two hours last night, nobody took the time to just, you know, from one of his representatives to just send me an email and say, oh, you the, know, rep the representatives, oh, they'll probably be getting an email. I wouldn't worry about that. Right, yeah. All right. Uh, that's all right. They so, probably can't get on your site right now. It's probably being pounded. So, so Jeffrey, what, what was going on in your mind? Man? I really, because I like, you were the closest to him. You were like two and a half feet away. Jeffrey, I, I think uh, he told me before when we were in break. He said, if we are involved with that, Jeffrey's leaving now. He's very annoyed and angry at this whole thing. <laughs> no, it was like uh, you know, I'm in here, you know, playing around with him. He's having fun, and all of a sudden, he really. Uh, it really meant a lot to him, and I, I, I don't know. I, I respect uh, that, big I respect, time. But I respect him for uh, being forceful and uh, clear. I had no idea that was up there. No idea. And even if no it's clue. a fake thing, even if it's a clearly a fake thing, it still shouldn't be up there. I mean, the kids are looking at it. I don't have kids, but if I did, I'd be pretty pissed. All right. See, now I'm on the end of the spectrum where I say if it's the Internet, anything goes. I say anything goes. It's the First Amendment, man. I don't care what it says. But fine, he's still got to do what he, what he did. Okay, that's fine. He wasn't arguing the First Amendment. He was saying you're a prick and you're a racist if you let that be on your website. I was an innocent bystander, and that's what pisses me off. I had no idea. And, and like he dissed us at the end of the interview. I had yeah. no freaking clue, and that's what's pissing me off. I had no idea. I told him man to man. I had no idea about what uh, he was talking about. I was trying to be clear without coming across like we're totally separating ourselves from Sick Boy. He's never been here before. I don't know what the site is at all. I didn't want to go that route, but I wanted him to know that, uh, no, we don't know or condone anything that is on his website. And if you look on his website at the bottom, it says the person that runs his website does not necessarily agree with what's posted here or, or anything. And I can't it's a, the damn thing 24 hours a day, which is a real problem when you've got... 15 guys writing who are all, you know, chomping at the bit to try and be funny. And, it's, you know, somebody does something that pisses off the rock. Yeah. I, I get the heat for it, and then, you know, you guys get, get uh, blown off. When you have an open forum on the Internet or in books or magazines or anything, it's sometimes that happens. Well, look at what happened with the New York Radio Message Board. Yeah. Hey, and Bob. Zillions oh. of people that, uh, hey, what's up, Bob? Exactly. Same thing. Heard that thing. I thought I thought you guys were dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so did we. I'm, I'm not making a joke. I, I was honestly. driving home. I, I, I skidded my truck, and I turned up the radio. I pulled right off the road. I said, these guys are dead. Yeah. yeah Dale from Manhattan wants to know, uh, are you guys cleaning out your shorts and hosing off the chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was, you know, it was it was very real though what he was saying and feeling. Yeah, that that I mean, it was. Just, I don't think he understood that. You see, he thought that you guys were associated with Sick Boy, uh, like you had something to do with his website. Right. It's not like he came. As soon as he found out that Sick Boy was there, because he says, "Oh, oh," he said, "I saw you outside and I didn't know that you were Sick Boy." Right. So as soon as he found out that he was Sick Boy, that's when he went. Uh, no pun intended. Ape. All right. You know what you should have done? What? Not you. <laughs> Sick boy. Like right when he said that, you should have gone, oh, yeah, well, I'm telling you, Rock. You know, like get into character. Yeah, because I wasn't close enough to get my ass kicked there, and Sick boy, you should have seen your face, man. Classic. Oh, I could feel it. I could feel the look on my face. I'm like, there is no blood in my face right now. The Rock is like life. a couple of feet away from me. A couple of feet. Try, like, like, try like, like 10 inches. inches or something away from me. 
And looked that he had in his eyes. I'm like, well, I'm getting my ass kicked tonight. Well, that would have been. But it would have been, been by the rock. Right? Yeah, that's true. Cool. You know, at least that would have been, 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 cool. that would have been Rick's Fight Club. I'm trying to think what's the move if he starts just pummeling you. There's no move. Well, there's no move. You no. sit and watch. No, you just you just let him hit you. You sit and watch. Get the hell out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bob. Thank you. You guys, you you guys would have been so safe because uh, you have Spaz, the pro wrestler, in the in the studio. Uh, yes, Spaz could have laid some moves on him. He could have laid the. I don't want to say it. Bye. All right. Thank you. Oh my God. Hey, Chuck, you're next. What's going on? Yo, I, I can smell what was in your pants. <laughs> no. Wow. Damn. Wow. I'll tell you something. I don't give a damn who you have on. Anybody that comes on the O&A show from now on, my ears are glued to the radio. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a damn who it is. It was still good, but I'm going to tell you something. Your boy, Sick Boy, he, this is what got him. He was like, Oh, it's only the same thing that goes here on this show. I know what that killed my yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, and that, I, that came out know. totally the wrong That's way. That's what did it, baby. Chuck's a black guy. <laughs> Not that it matters, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently he doesn't know me very well, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you one yep. thing: joke time was over real fast. It was oh, like, yeah. poof. Ah, oh, man, I, I'm gonna tell you something. It was brutal, but it was still good, man. And you know what? You guys handled it very well. Right. You, you know what I mean? You handled it as best as you could. You stood by the fact that you told the truth. You stood by your boy, sick boy, who, by the way, and what, what the worst kind of advice ever, getting a character, he'd have been dead boy. Never <laughs> yeah, seen his name right, from now on. Man, right. You know what I mean? But you did the best thing you could. You stood by the fact that, hey, look, this guy, we're associated with him, but not not in the way that you think, and that's the truth, and what can we do about it? You know right. what I mean? Well, thank uh, Later on, hey, it's still good radio. What the hell? Thank you, Chuck. Later on. Bye. Joe, killed by a sister. Jeffrey's leaving? I'm going to work. Oh, oh my God! No one's hanging us anymore. That's it. It's over. That's not true. I know. Oh, I man. had a great time. This is the best time. Well, that's last it. Time was fun too. With yeah. Kimmel. You're always here for some highlight. I know. Really, last time it was pretty crazy too. All right, we'll say goodbye to Jeffrey Ross, everyone. Not at Jeffrey. It's gonna be at Caroline's uh, tonight through Sunday. Very funny man. Go that's see him at Caroline's. Eight o'clock show tonight. Eight o'clock show tomorrow night. Eight o'clock show Saturday. A couple 10.30 shows thrown in there Friday and Saturday as well. Come, drink, laugh. All right. Jeffrey Ross, everyone. Congratulations on uh, another uh, <laughs> stellar day of radio. <laughs> Banner day yeah, of radio. It was fascinating. Oh. Uh, Brian, you Yo, can cut up, the guys? tension hey, you know with what's a knife, cool? you know, Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, you guys, hold, man. The Rock's hold, a hypocrite. The rock, hold on. Why is, it, why is he a hypocrite? Why? Remember when DX uh, did a little skit on the nation and they all dressed up in blackface? Yeah. It didn't seem to bother the Rock at all. Yeah. I don't know about that, man. No, I wouldn't let that bother you. You right. guys froze, though, though. You guys are a bunch of pussies. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do? Get your narrow ass in here, Brian, and have the rock stare you down, and what are you going to say? No, Are you going to get all man. bad? I'd be a pussy. We tried to make our point as best as we could. Without uh, getting him any more pissed, you didn't see uh, the Rock's face. Yeah, and let me when give he you, was looking at Sick Boy. I, wait, and let me give you a little more information. He was not going to listen to anything we said. It was past that. Yeah. He just wanted out of the studio. He knew we were still live on the air. He just wanted out. All right, he's a hypocrite, though, man. If you didn't let that bother him, you know. All right. Later on. Thank you. Ooh, what are you going to say, Jeffrey? You know, the, 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 he, he forget forget the context of it all and how upsetting that was. Watching him get mad from two feet away, uh, even though he's an entertainer, he, he's, he, did, he wouldn't make eye contact with Sick Boy. He knew for his own head he had to look the other way. Yeah. He would well, there's some stories in his book that he has a temper. He has a rage issue. Oh, oh that's I, great. No, because I was. Doing, oh my God! You didn't know that. The line of fire. No, you didn't know that. Ed? I've been doing. No. I, I was, I've been doing a little research on the rock and stuff, and he, yes, he admits he has a rage issue. So when this whole thing was going down, I, I was just panicking, going, "Someone is getting oh killed here." Oh my God! And he, I'm six two two fifty. I'm trying to find something to hide under. <laughs> you know, I'm no small guy, but the, the rock's like six five, six six. The guy's got to be two eighty and nothing but muscle. I'm like, he looked over at me once. I saw the look in his eyes, and I said, Jesus Christ. I thought this you were going This is the wrong. Down, I should have stayed in bed today. I thought you were going. Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> At least you got an autograph. Yeah. Yeah, he autographed my book. Um, in your own blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tim. Tim, what's up? Timmy. Tim or Ken? Uh, whatever. Whoever you are. Take it easy, Jeff. Oh, and hey. Uh, I Bye, think Jeff. That, I think that the, uh, the rock... Uh, ambushed you guys, do it coming in and had a responsibility to say that to you up front. 
Or I, I think, oh, uh -huh. or oh, no, you were, oh, you were there commenting on it earlier. I'm very, I, I'm very suspicious because if he knew all this coming into uh, our studio and he had, he had a feeling that we might be associated with all that, then I, I wish he would have said something up front. The air yeah. should have been cleared up front and before you guys got on the air. Right. And that should that show should not have come to the screeching halt that it did. All right. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks. Well, now I'm afraid to go to the grand opening of uh, yeah. the WWF restaurant. Kevin, what's going on? My yeah, what's up? putting a cheeseburger. <laughs> All right, what's up? Listen, I just want to say I was on the rock side, dude. That's okay. Yeah. Just because, uh, I mean, I agree with you guys, too, because I know you had nothing to do with that website. But it was obvious, like, uh, he knew nothing about, you know, Sick Boy being in there when he walked in because he was horsed around you guys and joking around. Right. But, uh, whatchamacallit, um... The way you guys handled it, you were kind of weak in your defense. Like, you didn't really get your point across that you weren't associated with the website. Kevin, he he wasn't going to... You had to see his face. He wasn't going to listen to anything we had to say. He wanted out. Really? He was, like, furious? I apologized man to man as best I could. And as soon as we went to commercials, usually, you know, we take pictures with uh, our gas. You know, we shake a, shake a hand or two. We laugh, you know. And then, he, uh, you know, usually they go out in the hallway and they take pictures with some of our listeners that came down. And uh, you know, then if they're they're really cool, they'll they'll cut some liners for our radio show. What happened was, as soon as we hit that commercial, he turned around and walked out really? without saying bye. So he wasn't going to listen to anything we oh, had to say. If we would have made it clear that we're not involved with the website, we'd have gotten twenty thousand phone calls and emails going. You guys sold Sick Boy down the river. You bunch of pussies. You made it sound like you were backpedaling. So there's really nothing you could do. Well, the no, guy no, was I, pissed. I, I respect you guys sticking up for your boy and all. I mean, because I would definitely do the same thing. But it was the article. Well, I don't think it was so much the website, but the article that uh, got him all pissed off. You know. Right. First of all, the guy runs a website has writers on it. Right. If a writer writes something inappropriate, not only is the guy that runs the website maybe he doesn't know it's there, but then uh, remove it to the radio station that he comes up to every so often. I mean, it's obvious we're not involved with the website. And uh, whether we have to explain that to The Rock live on the air as he's pissed is another story. I don't think we had to. And we I think at that point he was pissed and he was leaving. Right. He had already made up his mind in his head. And we weren't going to talk him out of it. Uh -huh. And we can't babysit everyone that is associated with this show. We don't know what everyone does. People come in the door all the time. They got things. They got products. They got websites. What, are we supposed to look at everything and make sure everything's uh, milk toasty right? Uh, before we uh, we put them on the air? No, it's not what the show is about. I hear you, man. I'm big it's fan. an open forum, and there are First Amendment rights uh, that are protected. Y y y if mean, you I have an open forum on the Internet... I know. I agree with Jeffy, though. It's not it's the First Amendment. It's like, I mean, he wasn't saying that... Well, his personal... No, that, that's fine. Then he has every right to get up and leave. Right. But we, we shouldn't have to uh, backpedal or anything. So are you guys pissed off at the Rock? No, he has his own agenda. That's fine. I, no, I, I I respect what he had to say and stuff. But if uh, if he had any inkling that we were associated with, uh, you know, this before he came into the studio, then yes, I am pissed that he didn't like say it up front. Yeah, I think it'd be even more pissed if he knew that the guy who wrote that <laughs> writes for Paul Magazine now. Oh, not anymore. Oh. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, he's no longer going to be writing for my site. I can guarantee that. All right, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Big fan, guys. All right. Later. Bye. God, this is all anyone wants to talk about, but it was pretty intense. Mm. A pretty intense three minutes. Steve, what's up? Yeah, I, I just think The Rock is a total hypocrite. And he's a real jerk. Two minutes earlier, all he's talking about is when he wants to be a bad guy again, all he's got to do is call people trailer park trash. Right. And all of a sudden, it's okay to, uh, you know, it's okay for him to be mad over a website. I think it's a little ridiculous. The WWF is based on pissing people off, period. Yeah. That's why people watch it. It's entertainment. Right. And so is a website. I, I, I don't understand. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. All right. Have a nice ask, guys. All right. Bye. Uh, Mark, you're next. What's going on? OB. Yeah. Anthony. Let me right. tell you something, man. F the rock. That was, I mean, how, how, how do you just come in there and with all the, the humor that goes on on that show like that, that he could even get mad at something that he don't even know if you guys had a part of. 
You know what I mean? But I pulled over and I heard you guys crapping your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure all you guys did. sick boy, he, he was stuttering so bad, he didn't know what to do. I'm sure you guys all enjoyed that. Oh, that was great. Oh, I love you guys, man. But that was ridiculous. From now on, I'm not even going to watch them anymore. All right. Because thanks. that was ridiculous. You guys are the best. Keep thanks. it up. Bye. Joe in Brooklyn, uh, yo, where in the hell was Old Dirty when you need him? <laughs> yeah, he could have smoothed everything yeah. out, I'm sure. Hey, George, what's going on? What's up, guys? Uh, guys, I love you and everything, but I never heard so many stuttering. What happened was is in so my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, we admit it. We're a bunch of pussies. We're not this huge friggin' guy. You watch the goddamn show. Don't. Don't, you know, we don't trick you guys. We we admit we're the biggest pusses. Hey, man, no more raw interviews, huh? <sighs> what? We have nothing to do I, I know with it. any I know, uh, I know, I know. Just... off-color posting on any website whatsoever. That's it. The Rock had his mind made up. He left. Yeah, but I, he was retarded. He comes in and he's joking around with you guys. And then all... Yeah, well... You know, where was Reverend right now when you needed him right there? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. All right, guys. Take it easy. Act kind of quiet while Oprah tries to plunk down three. I got to hear this guy's logic. All right. Pete. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to say that Opie stuck up for uh, The Rock, and uh, Anthony just kept his mouth shut. Yeah, I because Opie was talking. What am I supposed to do? Talk on top of Opie? When he was done, then I uh, put across my point. Well, I don't know. He just, he, he was a fan. He was like, when I, when I had to do with it. You know, or, you know, we had nothing to do with it, and you just kept your mouth. You I didn't want to sound like I was backpedaling. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think you backed up. <laughs> you know, you pussy it out. Pussied out. I uh, made his point too. You know something? I, I got it. So much was happening at one time. I got to listen to a tape back of that and just hear what went on because I thought I had explained uh, pretty well. Right. What, what my point of view on this whole thing was. I don't know. I, I, I guess I was just going. I died, 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 and didn't even know it. I don't think any amount of reiterating the same point was going to convince this guy otherwise. No, you could see it in his face just and in his out. body. He was done. 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 There was no talking. Well, and why I try I, to... I just, uh, the way I got it, I just saw Opie trying to, like, you know, stick up for you guys. And, and one thing I learned from this show, the more you try to explain something, the... Well, Thanks well, for yeah. cursing you, ass. We had to dump out of that. Bro. All right, man. Thanks, Take care, Pete. fellas. Bye. Ah. Uh, at that point, it had nothing to do with the show. It had nothing to do with you and I. I was just man to man telling him in his eyes I had no freaking clue about what he was talking about. Yeah. And that's why I'm mad because he, I, it didn't matter. His mind was made up. That's it. Done. So. I'm done. As All soon right. as he said he had heard of the website, I'm like, oh, I got a feeling this ain't a good thing. Uh, I saw his yeah. face. He turned yeah. around. He kind of... He did that snort thing, yeah, that, yeah. You, that you see him do yeah. in the ring. The Brahma Bowl look. He did the, yeah. the snort thing. He kind of looked over sideways. All right, uh, Lisa, Ooh. real real fast. Uh, yeah, I thought I was going to cry when when he was talking to you. I was, I felt... Could I, you people stop cursing? I'm sorry. My bad. I'm really so sorry. But, I mean, it's like I felt really bad for you guys. I really thought that... He was gonna like punch you guys in the face for that. We're all bummed and stuff too, because we really like him. Um, we like the rock. It was so cool. I we mean, got, it was we like... have a really good relationship, or did with the dog. Oh, you meet, your, like you the... meet your hero, and all of a sudden, like he. And now we're scourging. He hates you. They're probably pulling the raw magazine off the newsstands <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> I don't January. Know which. I don't January mean, issue of subject, raw. But Anthony, me and my friends were sitting around looking at the raw magazine. And we could swear to God for a little bit, if you look really fast, you'd like Ernest P. Warrell. <laughs> Who's that? Ernest P. Warrell. Anthony goes to camp. Anthony yeah. goes to camp. Ah, uh, you must really be looking closely. Uh, I'm sorry, but I love you guys, okay? Right. Thank you, Lisa. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> we both did our best Dr. Bellows impression. <laughs> but it was, I swear, yes, but I never saw what who, Jeannie, I... <laughs> but you, but he said, but well, you, and well, then it was over, but, but we never knew, I, but, 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 but sick boys, and then he said, but it was never, but, oh, but we don't even know sick boy, we, we don't even know why he's here. All right, we got to take a break, we are so oh damn late. Oh my God. More of your phone calls in just a bit, stay there. <laughs> You guys sometimes, like, piss me off, okay? 102.
93.7 WNEW. Anthony Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Yes, our good friends at Stacker 2. Oh, let's let's welcome them back to the Open Anthony Show, Anthony. For the new millennium. For the new millennium is right. Mm-hmm. Stacker 2 has been here uh, since the beginning on the Open Anthony Show, and we appreciate that. Lots of our listeners have lost a lot of weight with Stacker 2. Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. It yeah. burns the fat. Mm-hmm. It, uh... Crushes the cravings in between meals. One more. And it gives you the boost of energy. Yes. That, that you need when you're lacking late in the day like like uh, we are. Uh, if you want to check it out for yourself, it's Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. They have a website. Everyone has a website these days. www.stacker2.com. What do you think's on the Stacker 2 website, Ant? Um, chicks. There are chicks on the site. Are there? I went there, yeah. Girls that have lost uh, weight using Stacker. Okay. Yeah, and like bikinis and stuff. All right, Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Give them a call, 1-800-LIGHTLINE. That's 1-800-L-I-T-E-L-I-N-E. Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Uh, 1027 WNW, it's Opie and Anthony. Hey, man. What's up? We just got the people's brush off. <laughs> oh, oh, you know we cannot stay out of trouble. We try. I thought today would be the day we'd just have a boring Opie and Anthony show, have a little interview with The Rock, and then we go eat some food at uh, Paisano or something. Yeah, but no, there's somehow we're always ending up in some form of trouble. Maybe it was all fake, and we're just going to be part of a storyline for the WWE. Oh, you think? <laughs> Yeah, that must be it. Go ahead, taunt him a little bit then. Oh, oh yeah. Was he was he acting in? I don't think so. No, nah, we know he wasn't. Now, what what about like the if we go to the grand opening? I don't. Well, we are invited. Uh, Mike, what's up? Oh. Hey, how you doing? All right. Is it a big place? Will there be a lot of people? Hey, uh, Can Sick we steer Boy clear used to be a wrestler, run? right? Huh? Sick Boy used to be a wrestler, right? No. Oh. Yeah. Well, I think the Rock should have spit in his hand and punched you right in your mouth and broke your lip open. All right. Oh, cool. Thank you. All right, there. Uh, Bye. Bye. All right. Anthony. Grant, what's going on? Hey. What's hey. up, O&A? All right. That was kind of rough, man, but i got to take the rock side. Sick boy's got to go. I'm looking at this website, and the guy's ripping him. How do you expect him not to react like that? I, I, he has every right to react but how it, he did. I just, you know. But I, it's not your fault, but you, 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 somebody should have called Sick Boy right out onto the carpet. I think The Rock did. What, but I think he wanted you guys to call him out onto the carpet, How too. can we call him out when we haven't seen what he's talking about? But, but The Rock's telling you what was there. All right, so, but we have to read it for ourselves and, 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 and you know. This could be The Rock, the way he's talking. Well, the Rock's telling you it's there. He's like talking to third person. No, it's 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 here. I mean, the rock's right. I'm, I'm looking right at it, right. and uh, I I know what he, if it was me, I'd be pissed off too. All right, he has every right to. But uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys have somebody go check out the website, and maybe you could. Uh, I think everyone. The rock a call and say, hey, listen, you know, you're right, and uh, we don't condone it, and uh, the sick boy's not allowed on the show anymore. I think yeah. Uh, I think uh, a ton of people checked it out. I think more people checked it out because the rock uh, mentioned it. Oh well, yeah, sure. <laughs> You know, there's but, probably uh, thousands of people that would have never even seen it. Endorsed by The Rock. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if endorsed is the I, word. I, I, I can see The Rock's point. I thought he was going a little overboard, but uh, no, looking at it now, I, I can I see I have no problem saying. with any of that. I just, you know, I don't want to keep saying it, but I said man to man to him that I had no clue. And, uh, you know, he dissed us at the end of the interview. We were having fun. And, and, um, and the truth is I had no idea. Well, maybe you guys can talk to him and patch things up because their interview was going really cool. And then, you guys did a great job. And then at the end, you know, I, I assumed, like, okay, we'd, we'd continue the discussion off the air. And no, he just bolted. He and, left. And Psycho Mark, you're out of your mind. Was that oh, my God. Psycho Mark, who, uh, you know, is also in charge of trying to get some of these guests to, to cut IDs for us. You still went up to him and said, hey, can you cut that Opie and Anthony? <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a big brat. What, what did he say? What did he say? No, I'm not cutting that ID. Not if they're associated with them and all that. So he still thought um, that we were. Yeah, and the WWF lady was real PO'd, too. But, you know. Uh, she's PO because she's got to be. Yeah, maybe give, uh, maybe guys might want to give Vince a call and let him know that everything's really cool. Yeah. You don't want to have him just in the show now. All right. <clears throat> All right. Hey, thank you. You guys suck. Thanks, Greg. Bye. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's like somebody getting, uh, you know, putting a sign up in the crowd at the WWF. Someone reading the sign, getting offended, and being pissed off at the WWF because there's a sign. You know what I mean? 
There's, there's many things he said that were very hypocritical in our interview, if you really want to get into it. When we were talking about the signs in the arena. Yeah. And we asked if any of them make him laugh. He goes, yeah, when I see the one that says big red retard. Ah. Retard, very der derogatory uh, word. Mentally handicapped, OP. Just saying, where do you, where do you draw the line? As far as Obviously, as far wherever as that, the rock wants you to. Well, as far as that type of humor goes, though, where do you? You know? Can't believe Sick Boy. Look at him over there. Brush with the rock. Almost, almost uh, killed by the rock. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> We almost saw we almost saw a live death. That would have been a first for our radio. Would that have show. been cool if he like put him put him in the position to give him the rock bottom and he's like looking around all crazy, he's got six point and then wham on the floor. I'll tell you what, man, if there's anybody to get your ass kicked by, it, there could be none cooler than having a kick by the rock. By the rock, yeah. yeah. I mean as as intense and as serious as the whole situation was, yeah, afterwards I was like, Hey wow, the rock almost kicked my ass. Uh yeah. You know, but you could go down on the street and get your ass kicked by some nobody. Yeah. Rick, Rick has a great line here. He writes, We are the Jennifer Lopez to sick boys puffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guilt by association. <laughs> All right. Oh man. Hey Tom, what's going on? Yo, what's up guys? All right. Yo, I think sick boys are the pussy here, yeah, man. <laughs> what? Like Sick Boy's sitting there, and he's saying, like, oh, I don't know what's up with the site. I have no idea what's on it. And then as soon as The Rock leaves, he's like, oh, it was this guy. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> that was after, <laughs> you know? I mean, that was after that the commercial break, moron. You know? When Spaz ran me out because into the hallway and showed me what it was. I have no idea what's on the site. I don't know what's going on with it. Sick Boy saying the same thing when he damn well knew what was on it all along. Moron, that was during the commercial break. Spaz pulled me out into the hallway and showed me what was up on the site. What, sick? What, he showed you on your site? Yeah. I, d I don't monitor the site 24 hours a day. I got 15 writers who do their stuff on Wrestling Uncensored. I don't sit and monitor them. I got a business to run. Yeah, I know, man. But now your business is taking a hurt, you know? I, I, guess, more I don't know. You just gotta you gotta watch that more. You know, I want to know which show came more of a screeching halt. Like, what 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 was the seatbelt airbag factor more? <laughs> uh, sick Boy asking Rock a question or Rick taking a picture of Jay Moore? Like, what, oh, yeah. what brought the show to yeah. more of a screeching halt? Not a fear factor. I'm not talking about yeah. that. It's just more of the screeching halt factor. We were able to smooth over the Jay Moore thing. I don't think yeah. we're going to be able to smooth yeah. this No, one this on. one was 80 into the brick wall. That one, that one w with Rick and Jay was a close call, but, it, you know, I think Rick probably could have held his own with Jay. You know, yeah. me versus The Rock, there's just no goddamn contest there. Sick Boy versus The Rock. <laughs> Sick Boy, go home and get rid of that, man. Yeah. Oh. I'm turning wow. my mic off. Uh, What's the matter, Earl? Just another day on the Opie and Anthony show. That's what, it, this, what this show is all about. Mitchell, what's going on? Hey, what's up, man? All right. Listen, uh, Ope, I think you better cut out on that man-to-man -man stuff for a while there. You're saying man-to-man. -man. He was about to open up a can of whip-ass there. Whatever. If you want to hit me, he can hit me. But yeah, listen. I, uh, I was going to say what I had to say. I had no clue. Where was Sick Boy doing all this? Behind a glass or something? No, he was right next to the rock. Was he really? Looking very, very uh, scared. Yeah, that was a Kodak moment there. No, it me, certainly was. Let me paint the picture for you. Seriously, they were maybe a foot away from each other. Hey, that's close. Maybe. Maybe well, I'll, I'll, yeah. Are I'll we gonna play. do what what we learned on the Open and Anthony show today? Yeah, we'll do that in a couple of minutes here. All right, peace out, guys. All right, man. <laughs> oh, oh my God! <laughs> Could have done better than Rock. What? Eddie, what's up? Hey, Oney, how are you? Good. I'm sorry, man. The Rock is a big a hole. I hate him. I hate his character all about him. Really? Yeah. I mean, why couldn't you uh, why couldn't you guys kind of cook on like Undertaker or something? <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of the guys. Okay. Like, I, I know you have, but wait, 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 man. I love your show. Don't get me wrong. All right. I I just like, you know, I I I didn't like The Rock's points. All right. I mean, I think he's a big hypocrite. All right. You could guys, you guys could have done better. All right. Thank you. I'll keep listening. No, thanks. Bye. Bye. Uh, John, what's going on? Yeah, how you doing? All right. Um, you know, Sick Boy should have just said that you had a uh, guest writer. It was John Rocker. <laughs> yeah. That would have, that would have, you know, he would have figured it out right there, and then he would have understood. All right. Well, thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Jeez, man.
Uh, Matt, what's up? How you doing, guys? Guys, that was the most, that was probably one of the best rate I've heard in a while. You guys, that was great. I was so uncomfortable in my, I haven't been that uncomfortable in my car since I got pulled over for a speeding ticket. I was sitting there, I couldn't even, I was afraid to turn the dial. I didn't know what to do. I just froze. So I can imagine how you guys felt. You know, I, I don't like those uncomfortable moments, and they happen a lot lately on this show. <laughs> they really do. But that, I mean, that really was, that really got to me. But uh, seriously, The Rock, I mean, he, at least he could have been cool with you guys. I mean, he, it wasn't, he, he really should have got his facts straight before he was going to go on a tirade like that. Just shows you what kind of uh, mentality this guy's got, that he could have just relaxed himself a little bit and said, yo, you know, it's, it, you guys are cool with me, and, and this guy, he's got, I got a problem with this guy. He shouldn't have just taken that on you guys. I, I, I mean, I think that's wrong. You guys support him. All right. Mm, well, thank you, Matt. It was a good point. I'm just, you know, we're exhausted <laughs> from what just happened. Oh, All right, let's take, battle with the rock. Let's take a quick break, and we'll play the uh, the famous game. What did we learn on the Opie and Anthony show today? <laughs> so let's clear the phone lines and get into that next, okay? All right, man. <laughs> what, what, what are you laughing at? <coughs> what are you oh, laughing? Nothing. I just punched up uh, Sick Boy's side. Oh, all right. Just kind of looking at Oh, no, I'm just kind of looking. You know where it says xwrestling.com is not affiliated with any pro wrestling organizations? Could you put the Opie and Anthony show on there? <laughs> that, that would be... Uh, <laughs> that would be nice. All right, we'll be back. <laughs> Fran is 84 years old. Rick, you cannot have oral sex with Fran. I'm sorry. No, A no is okay. Train Rick Radio. The Opie and Anthony Show. 1027 WNEW. Just about done, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. 1027 WNEW. Woo. All right. Thanks for tuning in today. You you almost saw a murder today. What other radio station is going to give you that? <laughs> we should have played a lot of music today, Anthony. Maybe taking a vacation day. That would have been fun. All right. Let's play uh, What Did We Learn on the Opie and Anthony show today. This is going to suck. <laughs> what? Oh, gee, I wonder why. Maybe we should call the WCW and say how much we like them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's just a joke. Uh, Adam, what's up? Yeah, what's going on, fellas? All right. I learned today that The Rock or Dwayne Johnson, whatever he wants to be called, is just a big bitch. He, it's all, wrestling is not even about wrestling anymore. It's, about, it's a commercial about promoting yourself. What about the days of the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan were around? You know, that was the real wrestling. Warrior. That was real wrestling. All right, there you go. All right, Adam, thank you. All right. You know what, uh, yeah. you, know what you should have done, sick boy? Right when you were face-to-face -face with The Rock? And he was saying, before I uh, answer that question, let me ask you this. You should have went, it doesn't matter what you have to ask me. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see sick boy get hit. I'm uh, sorry. Alan, what's been, up? Would have been classic. Hey, how you guys doing? All right. Yeah, I learned, uh, you know what I learned today? I learned that Open Anthony and The Rock know how to fool their audience. It was what? a big setup. Good job, good job, guys. Yeah. Really? Jesus Christ. I think we're that you know, smart. Anything that happens in here, people will think uh, is a setup. You know, I guess because it is just so freaking ridiculous, <laughs> whatever goes on in here. Uh, no, unfortunately, that was... Uh, Believe what you must. Uh, Jason, the yeah. real deal. What's up? How you doing? Good. Uh, man, you guys almost had some some murder over there. Yeah. That's that's what I learned. Uh, all right, thank you. All right, later. Bye. Oh my God, I'm learning something from these calls. <laughs> it's time to go home. <laughs> yeah. Didn't we learn anything else today on the show? There was some good stuff today. I pretty much canceled out the rest of the show right there. Yeah, Chris, what's going on? I learned the Rock is uh, an idiot on the radio too. Hey, you guys should have had Spaz wrestle him. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that was good. Spaz, our savior, oh, sure. our hero, would have uh, smoothed the whole thing over. Even Ed and I don't uh, dislike uh, Spaz that much. He <laughs> would have got killed. All right, thank you. Hey, you guys rock. All right. Uh, Jason, wow. what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? All right. What I learned today was whoever schedules your commercials is really warped. <laughs> What? First commercial break after Rock leaves yeah. is a promo for the upcoming WCW event. <laughs> <laughs> was it really? I swear to God, I had no clue. I swear uh, to God, I was uh, listening the whole time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. 
TJ, what's going on? What did you learn on the show today? Today I learned that you guys almost had the last live broadcast of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Very That's good. pretty close, man. Oh, man, when when he left the studio, he he wouldn't care if you wiped the plugs with your butt. Seriously. Yeah. All, All right. right. You well, guys rock. Thank you, TJ. Bye. We were sharing moments with The Rock. There was a picture of him with Andre the Giant holding him in his arms when he was a little kid. and We got the pictures before uh, the problem right. started, so at least we got a couple of pictures with him. Oh, man. Uh, Jeff, what's going on? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Listen, I learned today on the show that The Rock really isn't a dick like everybody's saying. He just, you know, stated his opinion and got pissed off at Sick Boy. I don't really think that the stuff should have been said on that website, but he didn't know about it, and you guys didn't know about it. All right, thank you, Jeff. No problem. All right, bye. Uh, Jerry, you're next, Jerry. What's up? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey. I learned today that if I go into the bar before the O&A show is over, I miss the best radio of the damn week. <laughs> uh, you missed it? Yeah, I missed it. Oh. <laughs> How to have the how to take the clients out so because they want to go out booze and I get back in the car and I'm hearing about this and I'm saying it it, it never it never works out. Jerry, it was the most <laughs> uncomfortable three minutes of my radio career. Well, I'm sure you guys handled it the best. You guys are the best. I mean, we're trying to like talk to him or say anything, and he's just looking down like this, and then he goes, "Let's wrap it up, guys." <laughs> and what did Sick Boy say to him? Uh, it, we rehashed it for the last hour, but, uh, I don't know. Well, All right, well, you guys, I, and I guess I got to tune in when you guys go on vacation again so I can find out what I missed. All right, man, thanks. You guys are the best. All right, bye. Uh, Jason, what did you learn on the show today? I learned that, uh, you guys like those comics that you had call on from jail. You're both getting blamed for things you didn't do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all those comics were innocent. Yeah. Very good, man. All right. Bye. Tim, you're next. What did you learn on the show today? Guys, I learned if you guys ever suffer from constipation in the future, just think back to today's show. It'll clear you guys right up. <laughs> yeah, I got I to gotta check my pants, man. Yeah, go out and get some new shorts, guys. All right, thank you. Later. Bye. Um, Tommy, what's going on? Uh, what I learned today is uh, The Rock needs a reality check. Uh, as for a professional... Um, he should uh, look into more on how he's uh, acting. He should, you know, you're there helping him plug his book and everything like that. And, uh, you know, his fans are what uh, makes his book and what makes him uh, who he is. Right. And to pull a stunt like that, you know, I mean, uh, as a professional, professional people handle themselves a little bit better than uh, just run away like that. All right, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. Oh, great. Instant feedback. Uh, some guy saying... That when Rock was explaining his point, I should have ping ponged him. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> Joe, what's up? Yeah, I learned one thing. I learned a couple of things today, but mostly that uh, I could get disappointed in you guys, and that, that you guys were like sounded spineless, man. Yeah. I was really disappointed. How, how? I mean, you grew up in New York. You should have stood up for yourself and. I mean, I know the guy's a big guy, but I mean, what's he going to do? Beat the crap out no, of him? Like I said, i got to listen to the tape because I thought we actually uh, told him what was going on. And Joe, what? Yeah, but just like the tone of your voice, though. Joe, like you, you were saying, like you were stuttering. You, you Joe, sounded like you guys were scared out of your, out Joe, of your mind. It was so uncomfortable in here. You, you got, what, what are we supposed to do? Joe. Just all of a sudden, hey, what's he going to do? Yeah. Beat the crap out of him? Joe, Come on. We were blindsided, first of all. All right, and we didn't know what to say because we, uh, you know, we didn't even know what he was. I swear to you, I'm going to say it again. I had I had no clue what he was talking about. All right, I still love you guys, but I, I'm a little no, disappointed. It's, whatever, that's fine. It's going to happen on this show. You know what I mean? But uh, I I freaking had no clue what he was talking about. If you were here, it was very obvious he didn't want to listen to anything we had to say at that point. So you know, I've been to hell with him. <laughs> the hell with him. Then he's not. A, he's really not a friend of the show. All right, Joe. All right, I'm sorry, guys. Bye. One last call, and we'll get out of here. Uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't, Opie. Jim, thank God you're the final call of the radio show today. What's going on? Nothing much, Opie. Just learned what the true meaning of train wreck radio is today. <laughs> if that wasn't heart-stopping to listen to you two guys squeal like that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be the two biggest fags in the radio. Oh, you, you sick bastards. You guys enjoy the, that. We were, it was the best. It made me sick to my stomach to listen to you guys <laughs> squirm like we were, we were dying, man. I, I got to hear the tape. The I, two of you squirming. It's going to be painful to listen, though. I don't know. It was just 
<laughs> and Sick Boy. Oh, my God. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, loved every minute of it. You guys suck. All right, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, we'll play the last, uh, like, 20 seconds of that interview instead of the train next time. <laughs> I'm leaving. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm going to be taking the back way out just in case someone's waiting out front. We're taking the uh, the corporate helicopter out here today. <laughs> the Rock's going to lay the smack down. All right, we'll see you guys uh, for FU Friday tomorrow. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. You never know what you're going to hear when you listen to the Opie and Anthony show. That is for sure. Hey, Ann, your mom did say I was hot. Oh, come on, Mom. Don't bang Opie. You my mom. I'm yours.